Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> Oh, so much. I, I know. Well, I didn't ask. <laughs> ring the bell. I think it's six o'clock. Yes. It is six o'clock. Craig Salvador, are we ready to start? Ready to go. Thank you. Good evening. I'm David Assad, the chairman of the Zoning Board of Appeals for the City of Fall River. It's 6 p.m. on Thursday, June 9th, 2022. We are meeting at one government center in the first floor hearing room. Pursuant to Massachusetts General Law Chapter 30A, Section 20, Subsection F, I hereby notify all persons in attendance that this meeting is being recorded with both video and audio devices. Fall River Government TV, Craig Salvador is recording both the video and audio version. If anyone desires to make an audio, video, or combination recording thereof, please notify me now, and I shall make a public announcement of your intention. Hearing none, our recording secretary this evening is Patty Aguiar. Present this evening are permanent members, John Frank, clerk, James Calkins, Joe Pereira, vice chair, Dan Dupair, and alternate members Rick Sahadi, the gentleman to my far right, and John Sylvia, the gentleman to my far left. Patty, have all petitions to be considered been properly advertised and all interested parties notified in accordance with the rules and regulations of the Zoning Board of Appeals in Massachusetts General Law Chapter 40A as amended. Yes. Thank you. I declare the June 9th, 2022 special meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals of the City of Fall River open for such business as shall regularly come before it. I remind all persons presenting before the board, including the petitioners, abutters, anyone in support or anyone opposed to the petition that your presentation should be limited to three minutes. Questions and responses must be directed through the chairman. The board's rules and regulations direct the board to specifically look for information which supports the petitioner's claim. As such, the petitioner should identify and factually support the basis for the petition. I hereby advise the petitioners and all interested persons that this board is the Zoning Board of Appeals. This board's authority exists pursuant to Massachusetts General Law Chapter 40A and is limited in scope and deals with the use of land as regulated by Chapter 86 of the Ordinances of the City of Fall River. Additional permits, licenses, reviews, and or approvals may be required for the specific development and or use, which is the subject of the petition before the Zoning Board this evening. The clerks in the building, planning, engineering, and licensing departments are competent in their discharge and their duties as clerks. They are, however, not lawyers and are not competent to give legal advice. The action taken by this board has a real and lasting effect upon the title to your real estate. I urge all petitioners to seek competent legal counsel before filing, <coughs> before filing your petitions and after a decision of the board has been made. For example, there is a city ordinance, 2015-11, Section 10-1, requiring site plan reviews. A copy of the ordinance is available at the city clerk's office or from the planning department. I remind everyone that the building inspector is the zoning enforcement authority, and you are here this evening because the building inspector has determined that your proposed action is contrary to the city of Fall River's zoning ordinances. The city charter, section 9-18, mandates that all multiple member bodies develop and adopt rules or policies for public comment. We have adopted such a policy, which in short provides for citizen input on zoning board specific matters at the end of this meeting. I disclose that an official copy of the four of a zoning ordinance is available at the city clerk's office. One cannot, ride, one cannot rely on the online zoning ordinance. I cannot participate in agenda item number three, that matter will be chaired by Vice Chair Joe Pereira. Also, permanent member Jim Calkins needs to leave, so he is going to stay, and we're going to do agenda item number three as the first agenda item the, uh, this evening. So I'll leave, and I'll turn it over to Vice Chair Joe. Very good. Thank you, David. Agenda item number three, Dream Homes, LLC, care of Joseph Pacheco, 145 Hanover Street, lot M. 16-0048. This is a variance request to take partial, uh, parcel M-16-0048 and subdivide into three lots, leave an existing home on uh, one lot and two other lots undeveloped, 
waiving zoning requirements in the G General District. And I turn it over to you, Council. Good evening. My name is Gloria Pacheco. I'm an attorney here in the City of Fall River with an office um, on Columbia Street. This evening I'm here before this board uh, representing the Petitioner Dream Homes uh, LLC. They're a local uh, contracting um, firm. They've been doing business for almost 30 years in the City of Fall River. And the reason we're here tonight is because we're asking relief because of a pre-existing non-conforming um, front yard setback. Um, as you can see on your plan, uh, lot two, there's a home there. Uh, address is 145 Hanover Street, an existing one-family home that was built in 1865. And at the time, there was no zoning, as we all know, and the house is set back 10 feet from the street. Um, the zoning, this is a, this, this area is zoned a general residence area, and it requires a 12-foot, yeah, 12-foot setback. We don't want to demolish this home. It's a beautiful home from the 1860s. We'd like to keep it. And for that reason, we're here before this board to get that relief, which is a two foot uh, difference. Also, if you look at lot two, the current structure, the current home at 145 Hanover Street, which we're gonna remodel and renovate, we're looking at the rear yard. So we calculated the rear yard as being 15, which complies with the zoning. However, the planning department thinks it's better to use the 10 foot at an angle to the left, and therefore we want a waiver for that as well, just to be safe. So just a little, um, some background. Uh, Dream Homes has purchased 145 Hanover Street. It's one lot. It was originally three non-conforming lots. It was a merger of lots M1648, M1649, M1650, and the assessor's office, and we are now subdividing it into three lots. All three lots, meet or exceed all the zoning requirements with the exception of lot two. As I said, the frontage isn't there and we don't want to demolish this home, which is, you know, uh, a treasure in Fall River, and the rear yard is an issue. How do you calculate what's the rear yard? Is it straight back as we thought it was or as the planning board said at that angle? So either way, just to be safe <clears throat> and avoid <clears throat> ambiguity, we're proposing for that second relief as well. So again, the, my client is dividing this lot into three lots. We're going to build two brand new homes. We're going to renovate 145 Hanover Street, which, is there since, which has been there since 1860s. Um, and, and then also we will be adding two off-street parking spots to each one of the homes. So we're going to add two off-street parking spots to 145 Hanover, which has been there since for 150 years. We're going to add two off-street parkings to the, to the two new single-family homes. Each of the three lots will have separate water and sewer connections. Um, as you can see by looking at the adjacent lots here, uh, the proposed lots are pretty much in conformity with the general character of the neighborhood. We have a lot of single family homes, oddly shaped, small size lots. We have a lot of two families, we have three families. We also have the Bay Coast Bank right there. We have the Jewish home right there. It's mostly residential and we're gonna build two single family new homes. Um, we don't believe our proposal is not detrimental to the neighborhood. It's in keeping with the general character of the single family and multifamily use. And so we are before you tonight respectfully requesting that this board waive the dimensional requirements for lot two, the, the front from 12 to 10 and the rear from 15 to 10. We don't want to have any dispute over that. My, my question on that would be, and thank you for a very concise presentation like that. Um, the property address is on Hanover Street. The house faces Hanover Street. So why have you chosen to not use Hanover Street as the front and use the side lot line as the front? To be honest with you, I don't know which way it's facing. I don't know which way the house is facing. It's, you're, it's, it's you're, facing Hanover Street. The front Hanover. door is facing Hanover Street. The address is Hanover Street. I honestly cannot answer that question. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Mr. Pacheco, Joel Pacheco. Can I ask a question? Please. My name is Joel Pacheco, 411 Hill Street, Fall River. The reason for that, because it's a corner lot and we're going for a variance, therefore the, the, uh, the frontage changes to, to, uh, to the other street. I don't know the name of the street. Maple, okay. Maple Street. Maple Street. It, it can. So that was the reason that we were told that we were, because it's a corner lot by an engineer that a, it could change. Now the house, the house will continue to be the frontage of Hanover Street, which it does have the right dimensions. Uh, what that said, if we... Then the rear yard's off 12. The rear yard is, then if we do that, like you said, sir, 
um, the rayard is 12, we'll need a we'll need a variance for that as well because it's not. The is not going to change. It's going to continue to be Hanover Street with that number, and the setback will remain the same. So we were, we were told by engineer and the planning that was a, that was a requirement because it was a cone block. Right. Either way, you needed a setback relief. Yes, yes, because, because this would be 12 feet. The rear, as I see it, the rear lot would have been 12 feet, right. as you have it shown oh, here, okay. not giving you the 15 that's required. Okay. So and either way, and you're, 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 you're dealing with a frontage now by using Maple Street as your frontage. Right. Six, so of one, yeah. six of one, half a dozen of the other, as my, my yes. mom would have said. To your point, you're correct. We would have, we would have complied with the side yard of 10. You're right. You're right. We would have just needed one variance instead of uh, one, one relief instead of two. It's creative. Um, I can't wait to see the shape of the home that's going on lot one. Are there questions from the board at this point? Comments? John? On the pre-existing setback, that doesn't require because it's pre-existing. But because we, we're going to subdivide it, we want to just it's cross It's because our, of the subdivision. Yeah, yeah but still pre-existing, so not conformed on that dimension. Correct. But we can, whichever way we we can look, include it. Yeah. Which, whichever way we look at it, there's a non-conformity. Yeah, so. on the back. Dan? Yeah. Ricky, any questions? Is there anyone here in favor of the uh, of the petition? Anyone here in opposition? Sir, if you come up, identify yourself and your address. Hi, my name is Gary Bigelow. I live at 171 Hanover Street, and my property is uh, on the north side of uh, of the house mm -hmm. of the house that's uh, right <laughs> I'm not sure if I, I'm against this but I, I just okay. came in to ask questions because I'm not certain of this uh, situation my question is um, my land that sits there's two pieces of property that I own right the house that's on 171 and then that land that's adjacent to it okay the shape property right yeah. right so my my question is is if there's going to be a, there's we never had a fence there between the Southworths and us we just never did it was always assumed that it was on we I'm not assumed but it was discussed that it was always uh, a visual site I never had my land uh, surveyed mm -hmm. but I am going to because my concern is I want to know how close a house can be built to my property line. Is uh, so I, it just seems like a very small spot, and I, I didn't. I'm unsure about that. So I, I will I will tell you that the sideline setback, which would affect lot one to your property, all that's required in the general district is 10 feet from the from structure to your property line, which they've met. Okay. As we look at what they're calling lot three, it's not even close. That's that's an odd shape. Do you have a copy of the plan, or could you just look on with with council? That lot with three is kind of a, a dog leg shaped lot. That's right. their backyard or a piece of their yard is going to be close, but the house, as envisioned at this point, is not even close to your property. Oh, so I will say that. This was engineered very creatively to meet the 5,000 foot minimum lot requirement in this zone and to meet all the setback requirements except for one, which is required because of a house that was built in 1860. Right. So there's, there's no changing that. So we're talking about zone. the home on pro lot three, correct? Right. Uh, and, you know, what? Do we two. have engineers? Do we have a survey? No, no, there's not lot two. Lot two. Lot two. lot two is the existing house, right? And that will no longer that property will no no longer abut your property. Okay. So the the next question I have is um, on what is lot lot one is going to be undeveloped, right? At at this point. Okay. So my question about that is if something was going to be built there, is that 
is that possible? Can someone yes. build a house on that area yeah, there? That's that's the intention. My understanding. That's the intention of, of this. Where the house is going to be built. Subdivision. So the red lines. I don't know. Do you have red lines on yours? That so in order to meet setbacks, right. although it seems like an odd shape, that house would have to conform to those red lines that you have in here in order to meet setbacks. Now, if they come forward and they don't want to meet those setbacks and want something different, they will need to come in front of this board to try to get setback relief or dimensional relief. That's, that's not being asked for at this point. There's no particular house plans right now for this uh, division of property. When when that does happen, is there another hearing for that? Yes. There would uh, be, yes. To, to, to yeah, we need to see what that looks like. No. My only concern is no. I don't want to be no. a, 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 uh, not a cooperative neighbor, but my concern yeah, is that my... The yeah. I'm just concerned that it's going to be so close. They stay the if they stay inside that envelope, yeah, let me make I that I clear. Inside the re our as, red as, as Mr. Frank is saying, if they stay within that envelope that's, that's defined by the red lines here, yeah. that means that they meet all of the setback requirements for the G general district. Okay. And that conforms. If for some reason someone buys that lot and wants to do something different, they will have to come in front of the board for the nonconformity. Meaning lot one, if someone wants lot, to... Lot one, or, or, or well, lot three for that matter. So okay. lot, lot two is fairly locked in, the house is there. So, so lot three is going to have a house built on it? Yes. And then uh, property one here is, is the other spot that the house is going to be built on. So it would be towards the front of my house. On the Hanover Street side, correct? That's correct. In order to in order to meet setback requirements, it would have to bias towards the front of the property. So okay. So my question to you is this: But when you're switching the zoning, I have no idea about this stuff. I know I'm ignorant about it. That's why I'm here. Uh, in lot one, if some if someone was to buy that, someone were to buy that lot, are businesses a lot like if there was a auto body shop, would they be able to build in that no. spot? Okay, because I don't understand this stuff, no. so I'm, I know I'm ignorant about it, but I'd like to know. No, that would be a whole use change, and that's... Okay. It would still be here. Yes. Still have to come. would still have to come here. So lot one, though, is buildable. Yes. Okay. The way they've broken it out, this is a buildable lot if they meet these. It has the, um, it has the minimum square footage. Okay. It exceeds it. All three of these lots do. The way they've put an envelope together... That's yep. the red line is the envelope that a building can fit on the lot and yep. still meet the setback requirements. They've met the parking requirements, okay. uh, you know, frontage, et cetera. It, it's creative yeah. and, mm -hmm. and well done. Those two uh, spots will be bordering your property. Correct. You see that on the plan? There are two parking spots there. Yeah, I see that on towards the front of my, on towards the yep. front of my house. Yeah. Um, I understand that, and you know, I don't have a problem with that. Uh, I'm just um, <laughs> I didn't, it's obviously it's in front of it's in front of the house, so it's not going to really bother me uh, in the front, and I'm fine with that. What I'm concerned about is that vacant lot one, and uh, a and what would be placed there. If something were to be placed there, you would have this. They would. They would have to come before you again. Correct? No. 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 For one. Not necessarily. For again, one, that red line on if, one is where they could build a. Yeah. That triangular shape red, on Hanover Street is where they could build a home. If they that? stay within those boundaries, oh, 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 there also. Oh, no, I was talking about lot one in the back where it's five thousand eight, eight square, square feet. Yeah. That's so they house. could build a house there too, as well. Where that red line is. No, 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 not where it no. says lot no. one, but okay. where the red. No, that's, that's one big that. Awesome. That's what I'm saying. Bond shaped lot that's shaped like a. I don't know what to say. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so. Again, Mr. Bigelow. Yes. As long as they meet the setback requirements, they don't have to come back in front of us. So the engineering that's been done gives the future owner of that lot the perfect roadmap if it's approved here tonight gives them the roadmap to fit onto the lot so they buy it knowing that if we're approving this that that's done and that's what they need to do so it would be so you're talking about 
there could be free houses in that area. Absolutely. That that's that's what's been engineered at this point. And where would the access if they? I, I don't. Maybe you can tell me. I don't know. Where would the access point to lot to that undeveloped lot to lot one? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they'd have to get a curb cut that's close to the edge of your property line in order to access those those Excuse parking spaces. I'm sorry. They'd have to get a curb cut right. on the north side of their property, south side of yours, abutting, that would give them access to those parking spaces. And that does not fall under our purview. There, there's other permitting that, that needs other to be permitting. had. So. I see. Okay. Um, I, I, we always knew that something was going to be done with that land. <coughs> and I think what I'm best doing to feel secure about it is, I'm sorry, I didn't get to ignore you guys. Um, is I, I think I'd want to, I'm going to have a civil engineer come in just for my own satisfaction mm -hmm. to measure my property out, the Absolutely. land that I have. You think that's a wise idea? To go about that, it's always a good protection to know yeah, exactly. Yeah, just where to keep it so that I have an idea because when I, if I see things going up there, if I don't know exactly where that property line is, because as 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 we, when we originally bought this house many many years ago, the you know it was done by okay the line is on the side of the holly tree and it's straight you know straight down in the back. That's how that's how it was done right back then, and so I can see where that line is. But I'm not sure, is that where it is? So that's why I'm saying if I get a, a, an engineer in there, uh, perhaps that would be make it a little clearer to me. I'm sorry I'm being ignorant about this. No, that's quite all right. It's, uh, it's absolutely your right as a property owner. Um, and as far as the survey goes, I urge anyone to survey the property, especially if you've yeah, had it's a never period been of time. You've got a house that was probably built around 1840. And, um, yeah. Yeah. You know, in your concerns, you mentioned that there had been an agreement in, with, or uh, unofficial agreement with no fences built there. Is is that a concern, or do you do you care if they well, put a my, fence my, my, there? Well, my concern would be that if there's going to be a house there, I would like to see a fence. You would like that, to that see would, that a would boundary. separate that. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if that's something that can be done, so that there was a definitive line of demarcation uh, so, so, uh, it's just my, my uh, that's just the question I have that's why my concern is about the lot one area building a house there I'm talking about <coughs> that particular area I imagine aesthetically they would probably want to run that fence right across the property right up to the back um, uh, so I'm I mean, just, at that point, you have two owners because there's two separate lots, lot one and lot right. three, so. All right. <clears throat> so the access will not be from the Maple Street side. It'll be from the Hanover Street side. For, for lot for one, lot yes, one. because yeah. that only has frontage on, on okay. Hanover Street, not on Maple. So whose obligation is it to, to put up a fence in that area if they were to build in that area? Is that my obligation or the... Well, fence is not automatically required. It can be made a condition, but that would have to be a a decision of the board to mm -hmm. make that dis, uh, a condition of the variance. So at the time that they would come in for permission to build on that property? Well, the, uh, that would be part of the variance requirement. Okay. Yeah, but again, Mr. Bigelow, so you understand, if, they, if this lot sold, and I'm sure it will be, yeah. Whoever's going to develop that lot and put a home in there knows their, what they're confined to do, their limitations in order to meet setback. If they meet the setback with their design, they take that to the building inspector. Again, provided it's, it's approved here this evening, the building inspector can indeed give them a, a, a permit without sending them back to the zoning board. Okay. So if they meet that requirement, they meet the zoning setback requirements that are there, they're not coming back. So any condition as far as fencing, not fencing, et cetera, would have to come from us now. We've done non-fencing where we've divided lots, but in my time here, I've never seen us require fencing to be done. No, we, we have required definitive markings to uh, identify the property it, lines, property bounds which set, might yeah. be your concerns. Yeah, my, my, my only concern is that when a house is built on that lot one, 
they're gonna there's gonna be if there's no fence there there's gonna be a direct access right onto my land. You know what I'm saying? Isn't that correct? In other words, in the back of lot one, <coughs> I, on the drawing that I'm looking at, in, in lot three also. and and lot three for that matter, have, way right. down in the back of your property. Right, you know? right, right. So what I'm saying is, is that I can see encroachment as a possibility there. But you have every right to put up a fence yourself. Right. And so it's my, that's what my question well, was. You have every right to do that. I mean, you can't make them put up a fence. You know what I'm saying? No. Okay. Well, it wouldn't be part of it. Couldn't be part <coughs> of that stipulation of building on that property. Not if they're in compliance with the plan. I, I, I think that would be that would be an unusual requirement mm -hmm. to be set by this board. Now, if if there if if this were a business zone lot, it's different. And somebody was going to go in yeah. there, I, I'd say it would be much easier for us to define that that a fence of a certain height, et cetera, would have to be right. put in in order to, to screen you. Right. But this is this is different. You've got a residential use there now, yeah. and. You know, it, it's going to be still residential use. Just yeah, my concern. My concern. Into three. My concern was, my wife's very ill, and so that's the side of the house that where she her bedroom's on that side. Everything's on that side. So my concern is, without a barrier there, to to mark off where the the yard of lot one is going to go in back of the house, right? I'm I'm concerned that things are going to end up going up on my property. You know. If they're children, you can't, you know, they're not going to be, they're not going to say, ooh, I'm going on Mr. Bigelow's property. There needs to be some demarcation, right, that would keep them to that. Because I'm assuming, I can't assume this, but I don't know whether the house would be built, uh, we don't know whether the house would be vertical or horizontal in that lot drawing. No, this, I'm not talking about the one that you have with red. I'm talking of my concern is this, this is lot. lot. This is one lot. That's all, all one. This is lot two. And this is lot three. All right. So, this, so you're talking about <coughs> building in a, a house that goes here. This is all one lot, and right. the house is going to be most likely the engineering there. is planning it there. So there is no house being built there. No, because that's all part of lot one. And and you're referring to further back on the lot. No, because they can't meet the setback requirements over there. Okay. All right. So okay. Just so it's basically the way it is right now. Just the red lines inside that's, that's the red it. line. That's it. That's it. Total they have three. they have maximized the engineer who prepared this has maximized that footprint of the house that envelope yeah. of the house in accordance with the size of the lot. So the lot is five five thousand plus square feet, yeah. which is beyond the minimum. Yeah. But meeting all the setback requirements, that envelope is defined in red. Is as far as they can go without additional relief. Mm -hmm. And okay. who would want to go for additional relief if you've got something that's already defined? Yeah. Okay. Okay. That, that, that answers um, some questions. Uh, I'm sorry to take up so much of your time. No, it's quite all right. It's, um, it's a concern. It's cut out. That's 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 why we have comment. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Thank Bigelow. You. Thank you, gentlemen. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak in opposition? Please come on up, identify yourself, name and address, please. That's where he's Another house here. That's where he's confused. That's where he's saying. My name is Thomas Owen. I live at 127 Hanover Street. I'm across the street from the site. I have prepared a statement I'd like to read tonight. I looked up the definition of variance in the Fall River Zoning Regulations. It says it's a relaxation of the terms of this chapter where such relaxation will not be contrary to the public interest and where owing to the conditions peculiar to the property and not the result of the actions of the applicant, a literal enforcement of this chapter would result in un unnecessary and undue hardship. The applicant purchased a single parcel of land per their deed recorded in the Registry of Deeds. It was developed with an existing dwelling from 1865, a garage and driveway. Subdividing the single parcel into more than two lots and not being able to meet the dimensional requirements of the zoning ordinance is a direct result of the applicant's own action. If the applicant eliminated lot one from the plan, the existing dwelling would have adequate frontage on Hanover Street and meet the side yard setback on Maple Street. The asking for a variance for three lots that cannot meet zoning is a self-imposed hardship created by the applicant's own actions and is contrary to the Fall River Zoning Ordinance's legal definitions. 
The applicant also states in their application that the current lot is the result of the merger of three lots that existed at some point in the past. Certainly it can be argued that based on the current condition and development of the single parcel that the merger occurred by use as the existing structures were developed without regard or care for any former property lines as they may have existed. Any new or modern subdivision of the lot should be held to the current zoning ordinances with regards to area, frontage, setbacks, and lot coverage. Allowing for reductions to these setbacks for the creation of new lots is contrary to the purpose of zoning, and the applicant has not demonstrated that the necessity is not a result of their own actions. The application does not specifically state what dimensional variances are being requested, nor does it spe specify exactly what the desired setbacks are to be. A blanket waiving of dimensional requirements is contrary to the zoning ordinance and to public interest. The applicant must state specifically what dimensional setback is desired, not 10 feet, 10.1, 10.2, something along those lines, in order for the merits of the proposal to be properly weighed. The applicant states that the setbacks for the existing dwelling will be the same, which is impossible since the lot as it exists is proposed to be subdivided and that the other two lots will have similar or better than abutting lots. The plan does not show any setbacks on the lots for abutting houses or to, the, to, the, to their property lines. It appears that the abutted dwellings on the plan for abutting houses on the, it appears that the abutting dwellings on the plan are pictorially represented and are not based on survey locations. For instance, the footprint of my own house is incorrect. I would also add that most, if not all, of the abutting houses were constructed prior to the adoption of zoning regulations and therefore cannot be expected to comply with zoning or be compared for zoning purposes. There are rules that are in place for everyone to abide by so there can be no perception or allowance for special treatment. The zoning ordinances were adopted to correct errors of the past and establish rules of development to protect the health, safety, and welfare of citizens. The allowance for lots configured as demonstrated will tend over time to upset the peace and harmony of a neighborhood. The lots are oddly, are oddly configured and irregular in shape and over time it will become unclear as to who owns what and where. The layout as proposed is an example of overdevelopment of a property. If the applicant needed to develop three lots out of this single existing parcel, they should have done their due diligence prior to completing the purchase to see if it was even feasible. The board is not responsible for maximizing the profit of the applicants before it. The variance as requested is a self-imposed hardship due to the applicant's own actions and should not be granted. I would also add that I'm a civil engineer and a, I, I, a, a surveyor in training in Rhode Island. I do this every day for a living for clients. And believe me, this is overdevelopment of a property. These lots were merged by use, as the, as, they, as the applicant stated. In 1865, this house was built. At some point, the lots were combined for whatever reason, but it certainly has been used as one lot at least since the 1970s, if not earlier. So I don't understand exactly what the hardship is tonight. Probably. Probably. Thank you. I, it, I, I don't know why they were combined, and it may have been for tax purposes. It could and, have been. And still, by their own definition in the zoning ordinances, the black and white definitions of the city, it states that it can't be by their own actions. This is clearly by their own actions. He could subdivide two lots. He doesn't need three. The third lot is his own hardship. He's creating it himself. I, I will point out that the, the one-dimensional variance they're looking for is the quote unquote frontage on Maple Street across the street, which isn't going to change from the house that's already there. That's correct, but if you eliminate lot one, then the frontage on Maple Street becomes a side lot, 10 feet, which it currently meets. And then but, he has but plenty it, of- it, it can't meet it because it's, it's a house that was built in the 1860s. It, but it does, if, if you create the lot, Maple Street becomes the sideline, you have a 10 foot setback to the existing house from the sideline on Maple, Point so taken. he meets the sideline setback, so the front yard would be on Hanover. Meet the rear yard, then. It's the rear. It's yeah, 12. the rear All is right, the so one that is Then he's got an issue there, too, but he still needs to comply with the current rules that are in place. It's, this is a modern subdivision. We're not looking at lots that were created 300 years ago. It was merged. It's merged by use. Okay. So thank you for your time. Thank I appreciate you. Thank it. You. Anyone else wish to speak in opposition? I Sir. Yeah, come on up. Identify yourself and your address, please. Good evening. I'm Carl Machado. I own an intraside property at 781 Maple Street, which is an abutter to 
the property in question. Uh, I'm, I'm opposing this request. Just basically, it's a, it's a single family home and lot that exists currently, and we are super packing it without taking considerations for the safety of future children. And I, 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 I've seen the plan of putting uh, uh, two parking spots in each of the property. It, it becomes really unfeasible because people will need to have their barbecue place and their children to play, so the cars will go on the streets to allow the minimum amount of space if a family with two children want to have it. It's super congestion on that, prop on, on that property. It, it basically serves no purpose except for someone that is not going to live on the property, has no interests in the property or, or in the area per se, except a, a, a profit per se. There is many ways to do profit in the city, to develop plenty of land, uh, not, not turning a single lot facility uh, into three lots and super packing the houses. And, and so that's my reason for um, requesting a no vote. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak in opposition? Hi. So identify yourself and your address. Raquel Machado, homeowner of 781 Maple Street. Okay. Um, so I am alongside with the valid and important points of Mr. Tom Owens and Mr. Carlos Machado. Um, I have just a couple of my own as a resident and a homeowner, mm -hmm. uh, mainly pertaining to the congestion of what three lots are gonna cause um, for the street, like Mr. Machado said. Um, two parking spots is not does not remedy um, like the parking space situation. Um, again, like he said, leaves no room for families with children to enjoy a yard, force all of the kids to be playing on the street which Maple Street and Hanover Street is already a very busy street mm -hmm. during the day and on the weekends. Um, Dream Homes LLC is merely here to build homes, turn them around and sell them. He's not here to, late, um, to later to suffer the consequences of a congested area and where there will be even more traffic, like I said, putting the kids that play in the area at even more risk. Um, one point I would like to make was that Mr. Pacheco purchased this property six months ago, about six or seven months ago, and he has yet to take care of the property. The grass is two, over two feet high. There's a dumpster that's completely opened in the parking spot, in the parking lot. Um, and this really just brings unwanted people into the area because they go there, they hang out in the dumpster, they hang out around in the dumpster, and I have to call my husband at 30 years old to come get me in from the car because I just don't feel comfortable walking at night. So. I just want to leave that there, and um, that's all I have to say. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. Anyone else care to speak in opposition? Hearing none, I turn to the board. Uh, attorney might want to answer any of the objections. Uh, rebuttal. <laughs> Mr. Uh, Owen, who lives across the street in a single family, he mentioned about the smart and subdivision. We actually don't want to create a modern subdivision. That's not our intent, which is why we're keeping the current existing home and we're going to renovate it to sell it, which is why the relief was not something we did. We could demolish that home and we wouldn't have to be here. We could. Mm -hmm. But that's not our intent. We, we, are, we try to be good citizens. I live here in Fall River and so forth. So we would prefer to keep that home with the character that it has in the neighborhood. If you could give us the relief of that, <coughs> we're going to change the front to Maple Street of the 10 feet because the foundation was there. And then, like I just said, I'm gonna we request rear, uh, you know, waiving that as well because how do you measure the back? I thought it was straight back. Planning department saying at an angle, which means it's 10 feet, not the required 15. But it wasn't something we we're doing. It's the nature of the foundation that was built in 1861. Is is that we don't want to have to knock it down and make it a make it a modern subdivision. That's our intent. That's why we're here. We want to preserve that home, which has a lot of character. And so I ask you to, to grant the relief because we want to preserve that home. Do you have a rebuttal, please? Do I need to yeah, step I, up? Do you need to step up? Well, based on the last comments, the, the, the main intention of this request is not to preserve the existing house. You can, anyone could have bought the house with a 10 feet setting or 12 feet. 
and live on it very comfortable. There will be no need to request. I, yeah, anyone could have purchased it and lived there. It was occupied until about six months ago. The purpose of this request is to turn the lot into three different lots where it can be construction later on by dream homes or nightmare homes, but basically that's what is going to happen. It's a super congestion of, a, of an existing neighborhood without taking considerations for all of the other aspects. This, this is not, a, this is not a, 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 a place where you can put multiple, multiple family homes and multiple uh, multi floors. It's not, it's not really designed for that and that's why there is a zoning. And, and the interest of, of, of the owner is, is just to divide a super packet and leave. And so that's and, and no consideration for all of the other, uh, for all of the other neighbors and, 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 and the characteristics of the neighborhood per se. Thank you. Thank you. Now I turn it to the board. We have a situation where the existing lot has been crafted into cut into three lots that exceed the 5,000 square foot minimum. That consideration has been given to the setbacks all but one, which no matter which way we looked at the existing house, whether we considered Hanover Street or Maple Street as frontage, there would still be one uh, variance that would be required. Um, and it was either going to be sideline or, or real lot line. So I'll take discussion from the board at this point in time. And if there's no discussion, I'd entertain a motion to either approve or deny. Mr. Chairman, I would make the motion to deny. Okay, very good. We have a motion to deny from uh, alternate member Rick Sahady. Is there a second on second. that motion? We have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Second, John. Yes. Pardon? Yes, second. Second was uh, John Frank. There being no discussion on the vote to deny uh, John Frank. Yes. Jim Calkins. Yes. Dan Dupree. Yes. Rick Sahady. Yes. And Vice Chair Pereira. Yes. The motion is denied. Thank Finds our chairman. Could they please send them back in? Might be sleeping. Yeah, at this point. You lost your identity. Put it back. You want me again? Seriously? Jim, I think somebody's getting it. Somebody went to it. We're, we're, just, we're just. The chairman left. Peter. I want you standing there with one of those big cardboard checks. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Hang in until we find out lost chairman. Okay. Yeah, we need to find the janitor and return the safety. Oh, no, when you dress like you this, you're going to do it. I was still last night. It was so hot. There he is. Where have you been? There are you. Welcome back. Thanks. Thanks. Okay, that was agenda item number Back three. Oh, so maybe get away from Jim. Number three is done. We're at number three is done. We're on zero one, right? Jim's looking for you. On Jim, one. he just told me to come back in. <laughs> no, okay. He's wandering. <laughs> Jim's gone. Poor Jim has to go. Uh, Joachim uh, Fernandez, care of Peter A. Solino, 178 Lake Avenue, lot G60011. Variance request to exceed maximum lot coverage in an S district from 25% maximum lot coverage to 27.6% maximum for an extension of a driveway. This was continued from the April 21st, 2022 meeting. Good evening, your team. Salino, you identify yourself for the record and tell us what you'd like to do. Please. Certainly, for purposes of the record, Peter Salino, 550 Locust Street, Fall River, 
counsel for the petitioner. With me this evening is my client, Mr. Fernandes. Could you say a name for the record? Uh, Joachim Fernandes. Good evening, Mr. Fernandes. Factually, Mr. Fernandes owns the property at 178 Lake Avenue. He has a conforming lot. He gets a building permit to build a single family house that meets all setback requirements. And more or less through a construction design change, uh, he accidentally exceeded the lot coverage requirement. And it was discovered at the point where he was asking for his certificate of occupancy. And so literally the math is that he needs to not exceed 25% lot coverage in an S district. And per the engineering, he is 27.6%. So it's 2.6%. And really the cause is the change in the driveway. The driveway is a concrete driveway. It's horseshoe shaped. The uh, garage lends itself to a driveway that is more of that design. It seemed unsafe when he started to, to back out, uh, and so that's why it's that way. Um, we do have a site photo, if that would help the board better envision it. Um, I can certainly, yeah, please pass could it. I approach yes, the chairman? Please. Would you like me to start down here? Or just yeah, you start. The chairman? Just for illustration purposes, so that garage doors face this way. And so as a result, the driveway is the issue. So it's a concrete driveway and we're asking for a waiver for 3% effectively on the lot coverage requirement. All other setbacks and dimensional requirements have been met. The calculation by Stephen T. Roy was quite precise, right? It was two point. I found that amusing, Mr. Chair. Yeah, there was no uh, well, rounding no, no, I'm up. I'm just saying because the 3% and I'm, I'm saying I, I, I got it, but I particularly, yeah, it's on the side, so I particularly uh, like the notation that said something like "just say three, right? <laughs> well, that's a, well, what's the calculation? On the so on the plan, it says "as built coverage twenty seven point six, say twenty eight percent." I see it. <laughs> okay. So. So concisely, because the last petition was long, I would submit to you that. There's really no hardship here. It's already there, what we're talking about. Um, I think it's in the best interest of the property owner in the neighborhood that it be designed this way because it seems like the safest approach. It was accidental. Um, and so we're just asking this evening for that relief on the lot coverage requirement. So the change was going to the U-shaped driveway as opposed to, did you have just a J-shaped It would have been uh, the first leg of the driveway. Yep. I would have, it would have gone in towards the garage. Yep. And then to back out onto the street, I would have had to back out from the garage around that lag onto the street. Okay. Uh, so uh, developing so you, so as a you U driveway. Yeah, it allows me to, on the first curb cut, go in, drive into the garage. Then when I need to leave, back out, straight back, and drive forward through the other leg of the uh, driveway. And of the curb cuts, was there curbing there? Was there curbing there? Yeah, you've gone through the traffic process. Right? Correct. The traffic yeah. and he's gone no. through traffic. Yeah. He hasn't done the curb cut yet. It was pending. Yeah. Well, it went to it went to city council, and I believe uh, their decision. What it means is it was approved subject approved to the subject variance to being approved. So okay. city council. That's what I was asking. Yeah. City council approved the curb cut. Pending. So pending what we do. I got it. And for record purposes, he also has a certificate of occupancy. And there was no opposition from the engineering no, no, department I, I as well. I understand that. Uh, this is the Zoning Board of Appeals, so let's... Keep it narrow, Mr. Chair. We're trying to, very much so. Um, okay. So that's what... John? Oh, oh you know, keep talking. No, no. Teaching. Yeah, I, I got it. So it's, it's a teaching moment. It's a teaching... So, is there anyone here, any, any questions of the board on this particular issue? Is there anyone here in favor of this petition? Is there anyone here opposed to this petition? No. Nope. Uh, hearing none, can I get a motion to grant? Can I get a motion to deny? I'll make a motion to grant. Motion to grant by John second. Frank. Do I have a second? Second. Second. Dan Dupere, any discussion on the motion? Hearing none. John Frank. Yes. Dan Dupere. Yes. Joe Pereira. Yes. Chairman Assad. Uh, yeah, wait a minute. Cut Ricky Sahadi. Yes. Yes, Ricky Sa I apologize, Ricky. I should start down that end and work this way back. Joe said yes. Yes. Chairman Assad said yes. Okay, so that petition is granted. Thank you all. Thank you very Thank you. much. Okay. So that was agenda item number. Okay, so now we're going to do agenda item number one. The Procasanti Group, LLC, care of attorney Thomas P. Killoran, 323 William S. Canning Boulevard, lot 
C633, special permit request to demo existing building and erect a gasoline filling station and convenience store and waiving parking requirements in a BL local business district. Good evening, Chairman Assad, uh, members of the board, for the record, Attorney Thomas Kamar representing the applicant, the uh, Prochanti companies. With me tonight is Evan Correa from the applicant and Phil Henry, who's the site engineer. Mr. Can I stop you for one minute? Oh, yes, certainly. Sorry. Before, so I don't know what the board's going to do, grant or deny, but can you get a set of plans that are stamped by a Commonwealth of Massachusetts licensed uh, surveyor? These are stamped by Mr. Henry as a professional engineer. Uh, our requirements are that it be stamped by a professional land surveyor, a registered land sure. surveyor. Sure. And yeah. I thought maybe it was a double because I looked him up to Mr. Henry. Yeah, no, you're not. Yeah, that is Mr. Henry. He, yes, he only has that one Massachusetts license. Yeah. So, if you can, and I should sure. say if you can, depending on what we do, rather than table it to another meeting to get the plan stamped by a uh, surveyor. Uh, let's go forward and then uh, su supplement your application with a stamp set of plans. We, we can certainly uh, do that. Yeah. All right. So you got between Tom. Henry, you got Tom. Edward. And this is Mr. Henry. Phil Henry. Philip, Philip, P, Henry. Philip P. Henry. And Edward. Everett Correa. Everett, Everett Correa. Yeah. Everett. So now it's all yours. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we're here before you tonight uh, dealing with the property at 323 William S. Canning Boulevard. Um, it's the site of the former grocery outlet that's been closed for some time. Um, the ultimate plan, uh, if the requested relief is granted, would be to raise the existing structure that's there uh, and construct a, uh, I don't even like to use the term convenience store, but it's probably the best way to describe it. But if you've seen one of these facilities, it's, it's certainly, a, certainly more than a convenience store. But a convenience store and, and filling station, um, the Procrescenti Pro Group um, has been developing what's called a neon marketplace. Uh, there was a new one built in Seekonk, right where the 1149 restaurant previously was. Uh, they have four in operation, there's three under construction, and there's um, nine in permitting in various places around the Commonwealth and Rhode Island. Uh, the proposed uh, development of this site would um, mirror the one that's constructed in Seekonk, if any of you are familiar with that one. Some of the other ones that are open in operation, they consider to be like their express type of sites. This would be a, a full uh, size and operational one. So the property at issue is located in the uh, BL district. Um, and in order to have a gasoline filling station, we're required to get a special permit from this board. So that's one of the uh, pieces of relief that we're looking for. Um, we're also asking for a special permit with regarding some of the parking buffer zones um, that are required under the bylaw. That's section 86.444, subsection B1 and 2. Um, if you've seen the existing site or if you're familiar with the existing site, um, it's currently pretty much landscaped right out to um, the property lines. Uh, as developed, uh, we're pretty much going to keep majority of the site asphalted, um, but there will be a slight increase in some green space areas, but there'll be an overall upgrade uh, to the site itself. Um, there'll be new curbing installed, new striping for parking. Obviously, we're going to demo the building. The exist, I'm excuse me, the new structure will be constructed towards the rear of the property uh, with the gasoline filling stations and canopy uh, constructed towards the front, front along Newton Street. Um, there will be point of access proposed from William S. Canning Boulevard uh, as well as from Newton, St Newton Street. We provide 35 parking spaces. Um, we comply with zoning in all other respects, again, with the exception of that special permit for the uh, parking buffer area. Um, there's a, a 10 feet requirement, and in a few areas, I think we get down to as close as about two or three feet. Is that correct? Yeah. So we get down to close to about two or three feet. But again, if you go out to the site as it sits today, uh, there's no buffer from the parking, from the from the boundaries. It, it pretty much the parking spaces go right up against the um, against the property lines. Uh, it, the proposed operation, um, it's proposed to be open 24-7. Uh, obviously, the applicant, um, once they get open and they're in operation, uh, they see know whether or not there is that need to keep it open 24 7 but that's that's the initial um, intent of the applicant is to be open uh, around the clock uh, we'll be happy to 
answer any questions uh, from the board, uh, if there are any, um, or obviously if there are any comments from any of the uh, citizens that are here tonight, we'd be happy to address those as well. Um, you haven't been to site plan review yet? We, we have not. So we, we knew that we needed this relief first. I, I think the application is pretty close to teed up, uh, getting ready to be filed. We do actually have to go through the MEPA process for this site as well. Mm -hmm. Um, so we're going to be going through that, and, and hopefully we'll get to that maybe in the uh, in the fall. Um, but we know that after this board, we certainly have to go to site plan review, and, and I'm sure they're going to take a very close look at our our drainage, our points of uh, ingress, egress. Well, that's um, what I was that's where I was coming from. Whether or not it was going to be William S. Canning, I see only, only, only proposed right in and out, only curb cut. So that's going to be off William S. Canning Boulevard. And Right, so we super care of improvements on Newton Street. Right. Okay. Uh, it's going to be a canopy. Um, yep. But I don't see its commercial district, so there's not, I didn't see any residences in the area. No, they're not. Yeah. Land and, infiltration. And I'm, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. I mean, it, again, if you, if you drive out to that area, I mean, it, it's heavily de developed uh, from a commercial standpoint. Uh, this property sits kind of across the street, almost directly from the South Coast Marketplace uh, and that Burger King that, that sits out at the front of the, or the entrance to the marketplace. Um, and, you know, you've got the First Ford, uh, you got the new Chipotle, the Aldi store. Um, so we certainly think that the proposed uh, development fits within the surrounding neighborhood. Uh, and again, there are no residences that are, you know, close by. And the only relief that you're looking for um, is, a, is the waiving of the parking requirement. The parking, and we need a special permit to put a, uh, for the gasoline. So we comply with the actual number of parking spaces. It's just where they're situated in, in proximity to the uh, to the boundary lines. Okay. Okay. We've heard the presentation, members of the board. Any questions? Oh, is there? Yeah. Dan. You you no no. I thought you were doing some calculations here. Uh, is there anyone here in favor of this petition? Is there anyone here opposed to this petition? Okay. But you've heard what um, Attorney Kalorans presented. We've got a special permit and, and, uh, to demolish the building. Motion to grant, motion to deny. Make a motion to grant. Should we have the finding that it's not less detrimental to the neighborhood? That's true. I would amend that. Motion is made. Point. Yeah, go ahead. That the development as uh, as presented is not more detrimental to the neighborhood. Okay, step one, not more detrimental. Joe Pereira, do I have a second on that finding? Second. Second, Dan Dupay. Any discussion on that motion? Hearing none. Ricky Sahadi? Yes. Dan Dupay? Yes. Joe Pereira? Yes. John Frank? Yes, and it goes to site plan anyways. And right? it goes to site plan. Right. No. Yeah. We get there, you can make it a condition, express condition if yeah, you want. Yeah, Chairman of Side, studies, yes. this is going to yeah. be a whole... Okay. Well, well, so that's that part. Number two, how about the special permit? Now that we've got the finding that it's not going to be just detrimental, can I get a motion to grant the special permit? Oh, that's the special permit. I'll make the motion to okay. yeah. Plan. yeah. Site plan review, special permit. Okay, so John Frank, Second. motion, special permit. Second by Joe Pereira? Yes. All right, any discussion on the motion? Hearing none. Ricky Sahadi? Yes. Dan Dupere? Yes. Joe Pereira? Yes. John Frank, yes. Chairman Assad, yes, okay. Special permit granted, condition goes to site plan review. You get the review. And, and we'll get the plan stamped by get the, the land surveyor and get those filed yeah. with planning department. I just wanted to be clear that vote for the special permit that covered the two special permits we both, needed. Both, that was the Perfect. parking and the uh, gasoline station. Yes. Correct. Great. Thank you very much. Have a good Thank night, you. gentlemen. Have a good night. So, do agenda item number two, South Coast Hospital Groups, Inc. Group, Inc. Okay, Attorney Matt Burke cannot be here uh, because he is no longer representing South Coast. My understanding is he became a city employee now. 
38 Hillside Street, lot M16-8. This is a variance slash special permit request to construct an off-site, two-story, 442-space parking garage in a G general district, waiving all zoning requirements. Good evening. Good evening. Will you identify yourself for the record, please, and tell us who you are and what you want to do? I'm Philip Oliveira with South Coast Hospitals Group. What was your first name? Philip Oliveira. <laughs> Chair Assad, thank you. Members of the board, thanks for having us uh, tonight so we can present our request. Introduce yourself. Uh, Barry Van Logan from Civil and Environmental Consultants. We're the uh, engineering consultants on the uh, project. Okay. What was, what was your last name? Van Larhoven. I have a business card if you would like that. It's, it's a Boy, that card. would make your life a lot easier. Okay. So t tell us what we're doing. Yeah. So we're, we're here to uh, request a variant special permit to allow a one level parking deck over our existing parking facility in the off of Prospect Street in between Hillside, Hillside Street, uh, Hanover, Linden, and Prospect. So we, be we believe that this will add much needing parking to the area and add an additional 200 plus spots, which put a total of 442 spots in, the, in that parking area. Uh, we're looking for um, this in, in a G zone use. And we don't. We believe that uh, the proposed structure will significantly increase the parking and will be a benefit to the surrounding neighborhood. And the setbacks are similar to all the surrounding structures. And we also believe that the proposed use is not substantially uh, more detrimental than the current non-conforming use of the property. And I believe you all have the. Yeah, we've got the plan. Uh, my understanding uh, is there was a building there that went, right? Was there once a house that got demolished? There was, yeah, a number of years ago. Yeah. So that made you pre-existing non-conforming as it exists now. Correct. Now with that going and going up, you're going to need a special permit or a variance unless, and I don't I don't see anything in the plans that said you were having a... Um, a building on site or a an office so what we're dealing with um, is really the variance because in the G district garages aren't permitted correct so the, the they want to go up if I don't think it fits into the model for a special permit even though I think they applied for both variance slash special permit I think because of the the nature of this particular use and based in the G district, because it's not ancillary to or on the lot that's being used by South Coast. It's just a parking lot. That's correct. It's not, there's no building that's being, this is a separate detached. So I think, in my opinion, the better way to approach it would be if we want to grant a variance and talk about shape, topography, soil condition, hardship, um, what's going on there versus the special permit. And that way we don't deal with uh, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But let me see if there's anybody here in favor or opposed. Is there anyone here in favor of this petition? Is there anyone here opposed to this petition? Yes, yes ma'am. Will you identify yourself? So My name is Nancy Jones, and I live directly across the street where the site wants to be built, 29 Hillside Street. 129 Hillside. 29. 29 Hillside. And could I give you a couple of pictures? You can. Yes, ma'am. You can. You live there. It's a right across well, from your house. I'm probably the only one here because I'm the only house. This is probably going to affect. But my son bought this house a year and a half ago, so I could retire there to get my first floor and plan on staying there. So this is my view now. Okay. And that parking lot, it's a two-story parking lot. It's going to be a one one level on on grade. It says on your thing two two. So we. Well, Construct a two-story. It says right on the table. I think it's got to be a total of two stories. So yeah, we have yeah. one, and then the next right. one. It's right. the one that exists right. today. So yeah, go go. So, so you got this. You got this. You yeah. got you got what exists, and you go one above it. Okay. Okay. Right. So go ahead. So, so but you're living there, and you're looking at it. So I'm looking at this. Um, 
and not only that, I already, I, on the side, South Coast owns um, Corrigan Mental Health. So to my right, I look at this building, which I could probably touch, it's so close. I don't have a problem with that, because I don't really look, it's my bedrooms. In my backyard, South Coast, I see Corrigan, and I see a parking lot, and another building that belongs to them. So we're getting surrounded by all this, um, these buildings, you know this, Right now, I hear people come on up from the plate, the, the mental health agency, with they got loud mufflers, you know, 442 cars. Like, I'm never going to be able to sleep in my room. Is open. It's noisy, which is, there's probably 10 of them or 15 in front of my house. 11 o'clock, if you sat on my porch, there's a guy there. It's the cars, it's not his muffler. It's so loud, he'll fix his phone, he'll put his music on. 432 cars in and out that parking lot. I just think it's like a big disservice for the city to approve that. And you know, that's my that's my life. That's where you know we can't even sell now and move anywhere because things are so high. Do you want those, or you want me to? No, no, yeah. no, they're, they're, they're going to they're going to be part of the record. That's oh, okay. Yeah. That's as as part of the. Uh, the construction, we, we're, we're proposed to put some shrubbing in right across from your house to protect a little bit. So just, I don't know. No, if no, and I saw that and yeah. I did understand that. It's just, it's going to block my kitchen window, basically, because it's already on a six foot. It's not going to block six wait, 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 foot from the ground. So it's like it's already got one level taken because it's so high. The land stops. Yeah, the elevations between. Right. Yeah. So there's already six feet. And then they're going to build a two-story garage. You know, if I stand in front of my house, that wall is over my head. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, one, story, one, story, one story, one story, one yeah. story. One story. He's got a right. picture right behind. So water right. level is on the yeah. On the I, could, I don't know if it would help. Yeah, this is just a rendering yeah. of what the parking garage would would look like. So, but how high does that go up from where you started to this? Like it how? Would, high? It would be one story, maybe the size of this height of this room. So it would be 12 feet, 13 yeah. feet. Total elevation from yeah. the ground. What is it? 25 feet, 28 feet. Oh, from, from where your house is because the elevation changes, right? No, right. so give us from the street level going up. So street how high? Level. It's on that side, right? Mm -hmm. I think her house is on that side. This is Corrigan, basically? Yeah, I believe so. So yeah, the wall goes up and then you're gonna go from here to wherever. How far is that? Yeah, we've got an existing, uh, existing wall to remain right ready rock wall yeah. which is which is right across the street from your house mm -hmm. so that that wall will remain and then we'd be adding about 12 feet on top of that so what is that if it's going to be about 17 18 feet from ground Wait. from where you're standing right? so yeah. above grade that that is a flat parking lot now regardless of the wall yeah. what's the height okay, thank you. above the parking yes, lot that exists that. to the total structure top not about not 12, not okay. what, what's the total height to the uppermost part of that proposed deck mm. from the flat parking lot that exists now? No, Simple when you question. add from the, from the street, from the street. So you've got the existing elevation from the street and then the deck. Mm. So do you have that? Mountain <coughs> Simon. So the wall, the height of this wall varies along the length of the street because the street slopes down. It slopes from a high point down to a low point almost 12 feet. Right. So depending upon where you are I in the house, that the height. height. She's right here, yeah, right here. Alan. No, it, it gets even, it gets even higher as you go. As yeah, to the left. As you go down. Which towards Linden, towards Linden Street. Yeah, because it shows it going. So, and we've kept, the, the parking deck is actually kept back because from that corner intentionally. So it's set back 60 feet. Set back, the whole deck is set back 60 feet from Great. the edge. I, I still have one yep. simple question. Above the parking lot that's there now, how much higher? 12 feet. Thank you. Is it a covered deck or is it an open deck? It'll be open. It will be open to start with. And the deck itself, just like I said, slopes and follows the grade. But the grade, rather than making it level, because mm -hmm. it was made level, we were concerned. That so we the entire survive. deck will be following follows the grade. The, follows the grade. Yeah. Rather than build it up. And it, and it won't be covered for now. 
as you just said. Correct. We, we do have in the rendering a potential to put solar panels on, on top of the deck, but we don't have that funding right now. So the rendering would show the, the solar panels, which we could forego if that, if that helps. The entrance, as I'm, if I'm reading this correctly, you're coming in off Prospect Street, yes? No, you're coming in here, right? So the only yeah, you're coming in. You're using point. the same the same entrance with the ramp being in the in the back where Hillside Street is. So the ramp to go up is going to be on the Hillside Street. No, side. no, that's the that's inside. That's within. I don't have an entrance on Hillside Street. No. You have an entrance coming in on Prospect Street. Yeah, we're and not. then you go, you enter into Prospect right. Street. Correct. You drive around, and the ramp going up parallels Hillside. Correct. But it's not direct. It's not direct in front of this lady's house. We have entrance and exits. It's on the opposite side. side. Correct. So cars will be entering and exiting on Prospect Street. Only. Yeah, there's no entrance. And that's where it is now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I just go back to. I don't know why someone would be idling outside of your house unless. Unless it's somebody, and I don't know whether that's where the entrance is for, is that Corrigan 49 Hillside? Yeah. The existing two-story office building mental health center? Yeah. No, I'm just asking. I, mean, I just don't know why, because it seems the that use continues. This parking lot, I don't think they have access off Hillside Street. Don't. They can't drive from Hillside yeah. into the parking lot right now. They have to enter from Prospect Street. Street. Right. Yeah. And there's no plan to change that. No, no, that, I'm looking at the plan that that's the entrance and exit and the only thing that's happening on Hillside is the ramp going up to the second, mm -hmm. to, to the first level. First level, which is set back. Well, my, my only, my biggest concern was when I go by Charlton and I thought, South Coast and I see that parking lot that's there. Now, the existing one, mm -hmm. I thought it was gonna be something huge like that like is it going to be the same as that no it doesn't look it's, at it no it's yet. just yeah it's just going to be one level above what's there now about 12 feet now we we do have as as was mentioned a plan to put solar panels on top of that to cover the deck for snow removal and, and recapture of, of uh, energy you know through solar panels but if that's a problem you know we don't have to pursue that but that was our that's our original kind of long-term plan would be to put that on there Solar panels but, go up. Yeah, but I, we'll, 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 let's, yeah. Stop, let's stop with the solar panels. Okay. Yeah. And the reason why I'm telling you stop with that right now, because if they're going to expand that, that's, that's going to require coming yeah. back and getting permission from the board. So let's deal with what's before us tonight. Okay. Madam, yeah. you, li you live in the neighborhood. You live there. You look at it. Your input is very important to the board. Uh, so that's why I'm listening to what your yeah, concerns just, you are. Know, I sit on my couch and I look into a, a garage that's just never thought I would live like that but you're okay I got that but you're looking at a wall right now there's an existing wall that's in yeah there is but I see I can see all the clouds and the sky and that picture right there you know I my view is not and I don't mind it's all medical buildings but I just feel like they come and come and yeah, no, no. I mean, that's why they're here before the board. Uh, and that's a very real concern for development uh, within the city. And that's one of the problems of uh, this kind of development and South Coast being in this residential neighborhood. So we have to do the balancing act and we say, okay, special permit variance. If it's a variance, do they have shade, topography, soil condition, hardship that they have to deal with on this particular construction? Um, and that's something for this board to consider. But the ongoing action over at uh, 49 Hillside, uh, maybe should have their number on speed dial and say there's. Yeah. Okay. If, if I may. Yeah, good. So, to hardship, are you filling up the existing lot on a regular basis now? And if so, where's everybody parking? People park all around on the streets around the hospital today. Yeah. It's very tough to get a spot. 
and and you feel how many additional spaces does this give you? Two hundred. I know you're going to lose some because of ramp, et cetera, et cetera. So the net gain is two hundred. Two hundred additional spaces uh, on top of you know when you net out everything because we're going to be taken away and two hundred cars out of the neighborhood. Yeah. Now this also I feel will you know um, depreciate the house because. I don't know. I would buy a house looking into a garage. That's just my feeling. You know, we just bought it. We paid a lot for it. And had we known this, we wouldn't have bought it. But it's not to me. I'll live with whatever. I Yep, and it's in a G district, and in the G district allows some of those activities. G district does not allow uh, if it was attached to something, some activity going on there. That would be interesting, but it's not. Yeah. Parking lot. As I'm getting older, you can't read the small print. You see this Parking lot, private and public garages and parking structures other than those provided as an accessory use to the principal use being conducted on the lot. So if there was some principal activity conducted on the lot, mm -hmm. it would be permitted. But there's no, it's just an existing lot by itself. So I, I think it has to be the variance avenue at right. this end. So would, would you agree then that the parking lot on this individual lot is a pre-existing non-conforming? Yeah, there's no question about that. So we need a variance. Yeah, no, I mean, there's no question. That's where I think that the special permit was an interesting approach to it. But I think now that, you know, when you, when you add what the grid tells us and where we are with it, that causes a problem. Do we have shape, topography, soil right. condition? Is there the hardship balancing between that and that and the public good, getting 200 cars off the street and out of the neighborhood? Uh, but you've got this pre-existing non-conforming use, and now they want to go up no, and expand a, it. No, it's an expansion. Yeah. So, is, Madam, thank you. Is there anyone else here in favor or opposed to this particular project? Is that your son with you? Is you don't. Right on the house, 29 North Side Street. Timothy Jones, I just think uh, try to depreciate the uh, property. No one wants to. It's healthcare workers that would be working there, so it's like 24/7. The cars in and out. Well, you've got that now, though. I mean, so I'm just trying to balance. It. You don't want it going up. You've got the activity going on there with currently what 220 spaces on that uh, lot 200 additional yeah 220, 220, right, 220 now. Yes. right now yeah and your neighborhood where you live is th those same medical workers are there and they're using spaces on the street on hillside on prospect they're driving around the neighborhood uh then you've got corrigan over there that i'm sure uh has some activity going on and I, i'm assuming corrigan is associated with it is not I, I nothing to do it. with I don't, you. I don't believe so uh, yeah, I'll have, I'll have to check that. I don't believe so, but I, I don't want to misrepresent, so I don't want to say yes or no. Yeah. Well, no, the owner, the, o I guess yeah. the owner that's signing off on it as a, as a let's see, we got it on the abutters list. Yeah. I think they are. Uh, 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 are we... Uh, the parking supports that. Yes. I just don't know if we do we own it. That's what I don't know. I don't want master, to represent. So it's Mass Department of Mental Health, yeah, Forty Nine Hillside. Yeah. So it's a state-owned yeah. facility. I didn't think yeah. we owned it. I just didn't want to miss. I wasn't prepared to. Thank you, Patty. That was good. And we we did we did set it back uh, from your your view so that there's going to be a, a buffer before the before the you know the incline. So and the and the cars will still. <coughs> enter and exit from Prospect Street, so we're not cutting a curb to go into hillsides. So. Mm -hmm. and, and, yeah. and again, I'm just curious, how, how long have you had 
this house? Okay. Did you live there prior to the purchase? Uh, I'm, it's owner occupied right now. I'm just saying before. No, I did not. Before you purchased it, no. No. What floor are you on? I'm on the first. First. Yeah. It's existing three family, so the people up on the third floor have a real good view. Right. Mm. Uh, no, I don't know. So that, that's where we go. We have someone who lives there objecting to it. We've got this congestion in the area. Um, the shape of the lot, rectangular, it's pre-existing. They want to expand it. Uh, can you make the argument under Section 6 that we're expanding a pre-existing non-conforming use? Um, and therefore, the standard is less. I think uh, I, I think if, if we were on the same lot as the medical no, use. No, no, I think if, it was, if there was something there, they no, wouldn't even have I mean. to be here. They're done. Yeah, yeah. They're done. They do what you want to do. Uh, I'm just trying to think of different ways to, because my analysis before I got here was I think they need a variance, and I'm thinking about where they need to go, but maybe that's what the board, that's what we're supposed to do. Apply it and figure out where we're Determining going. between special permit and variance? Do we have to vary? Well, I'm, I'm because with a bifurcated hearing, we could determine if it was more detrimental or less detrimental. But I'm trying to think whether or not the special permit, saying it's an expansion of the pre-existing non-conforming under 40A Section 6 as the exception, and say now that if we go that route, and then we say, okay, let's have the bifurcated hearing, make the determination special permit rather than the variance and say, okay, this is where you're coming from. That could be that could be a, an approach to it. Could be. I'm, I'm still at use variance right now, so. Yeah, no. But use? It's not not use. use. It's sorry. not changing the use. Use is there. It's an, it's an expansion of a non-conforming use. So under 40A, Section 6, that's what I think. Zoning ordinance or the bylaw shall not apply to structures or uses lawfully in existence or lawfully begun or to a building or special permit issued before the first publication, but shall apply to any change or substantial extension or such use to a building or special permit issued after that uh, to provide for the use for a substantially different purpose except with the alteration reconstruction to a single, it's not a single or two family dwelling pre-existing non-conforming structures uh, or uses may be extended or altered provided that no such extension or alteration shall be permitted unless there is a finding by the permit granting authority or by the special permit granting authority, which we are, uh, that such change, extension, or alteration shall not be substantially more detrimental than the existing non-conforming use. So under 40A, Section 6, um, special permit expansion of the pre-existing non-conforming may be a way to get the special permit and not deal with the variance because the the variance part uh, the way Matt had prepared it variance or slash special permit so if we go with the special permit we can deal with it that way I guess John you're correct so members of the board what do you want to do do you want to go review it as a special permit under 40A section 6 as an expansion of a pre-existing non-conforming, first having the finding that uh, this pre-existing non-conforming structure, having a finding that change, that this change or extension or alteration shall not be substantially more detrimental than the existing non-conforming used to the neighborhood. I'll make that motion. All right, so John Frank makes the motion that such change or extension or alteration shall not be substantially more detrimental than the existing non-conforming use to the neighborhood. And I'll right. second. Take it down. All right. Dan Dupier, second. Any discussion on that motion? Hearing none. So special permit. So we have the finding. Ricky Saadi? Yes. Dan Dupier? Yes. Joe Pereira? Yes. John Frank? Yes. Chairman Assad? Yes. Okay, so it's not more detrimental to the neighborhood than what's there. Now the special permit to grant 
the one store, one story edition, one story edition is shown on the plan. Four hundred. This, this will su require site, site plan, plan review. Site plan, a, a, a an absolute condition of the special permit is site plan review. That's John's. Is that yes, your motion? That's my motion? John Frank's motion to grant subject to site plan review. Do I have a second? Yes, second. Second, Joe Pereira. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none. Ricky Sahadi. Yes. Dan Dupere. Yes. Joe Pereira. Yes. John Frank. Yes. Chairman Assad. Yes. So we granted you a special permit subject to site plan review. We had a finding that this particular proposal would not be substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than what exists. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for coming thank out this you. evening. Thank you. No, no, thank you for coming, because you live in the neighborhood. We need to hear that. Okay. Agenda item number four, Hyperion Holdings, LLC, 370 to 376 Linden Street, lot M2612, special permit, special permit request, section 86423B, to divide the parcel into two lots, leaving the existing single-family dwelling on one lot, and the existing two-family dwelling on the other lot, waiving zoning requirements in the A2 apartment district. Good evening, Good evening. Chairman. Members of the board, my name is Jeff Tallman from Northeast Engineers and Consultants, here representing Hyperion Holdings, LLC. Uh, the petitioner for the special permit that's before you tonight for 370, 376 Linden Street. Uh, the property, like you had mentioned, is, is located in the apartment A2 zoning district, which requires 100 feet frontage, 10,000 square feet. The parcel currently has 59.77 feet of frontage and an area of 4,084 square feet. There are two uh, residence, residences currently on the property. There's number 370, which is a single family dwelling located on the southwest corner of the property. And there's also 376 uh, Linden Street, which is a two-family located on the northeast corner of the property. According to the assessor's records, both these uh, structures were built approximately around 1925. Uh, we had filed the special permit pursuant to Section 86.423B, uh, which gives the board the ability to grant a special permit to divide the property into two lots. Um, it's not usual that you're able to do this and to get two um, equal lots, both having the same amount of frontage and area, but in this particular case, case, excuse me, given the location of the structures, we are able to do that. So uh, it's a pretty straightforward 86423B. I'd be happy to answer any questions that the board might have. You showed the porch and the bulkhead on lot number two. Yes. Is that from the, so this, the existing concrete walkway stays with lot number two? So they have access to walk up, get to the bulkhead, and I think, what is it, four feet uh, is what you're showing me? Yes. Yeah, there, there is an access easement that would be provided around that walkway to allow access to the rear of number 376 on Street. An access easement to three, yes, you're going to need that, right? Because, yes. Because the dock line... Dock line is the property line, the proposed property line, and is the, the dash line. The, the proposed, so the, the line, as I'm looking at it, goes right up against the bulkhead and right up against the mm -hmm. stairs. Is that correct? Correct. Mm -hmm. So the dash line is, is the easement line? That's the extent of the easement, correct. So the dotted line is going to be the easement. That's going to be in the deed. That's going to be, okay. Yes, correct because otherwise they're not going to be able to get to the back of their properties there. That is correct. Yes. It is only it? goes four feet, so it goes right back. So the rear of 376, existing walkway, and then it ends, is that right after the stairs? That yeah, yes, that's correct. Um, there is a patio to the rear of 376, an at-grade patio. Um, located directly behind, behind the dwelling, so that access easement would basically bring you onto that patio. Okay. No, um, okay. So no fences, uh, so I don't know. I would think the board make, what's, I'm trying to remember when I went by there, what the hell I saw. Um, the existing driveway, is that shared between the two properties currently? No, that will stay with lot one. 
Um, I'm sorry. Currently, I, I don't believe what the use of it is since the property has just transferred um, within the past couple of months. The um, it, It's my understanding that the, pro the driveway was being used by the single family dwelling, number 370, and it's going to remain as so. So we're not, so we're the not two putting any more cars onto the street? No. So under B, the Zoning Board of Appeals may grant a special permit for the division of any single lot of record containing two or more residential dwellings existing continuously since 1954, provided that they be divided into separate lots, each of which contains a separate residential dwelling building, and the Zoning Board finds that the, the division is made in a way to maximize the use of the proposed lot, specifically access, parking, and yard area. So that's, you're going to have two, you've got some existing asphalt driveway, whether it's used for the single family or for the existing two family. Um, so I don't know what the current parking is. There's park, there'll be off street parking, I guess, for the two family if the existing asphalt driveway goes with the single family. I don't know. And, and I, I just see the size of this easement as, as a problem somewhere down the road down the line as these two things are sold. No, no, no fences. Well, I'm, I'm also thinking about fences, whether fences, yeah, no, no, I mean, I just yeah. can't see that happening. Yes, can't. Uh, but you would want, once this is, if this is approved, then you have to have the markers, uh, you have to have the, the line markers in there to avoid the building inspector getting called out on a Saturday afternoon. Right. Saying. So there's going to have to be a survey in order to place those markers. Yeah, that's going to be a condition, I think, if we grant it. Yeah, I don't know. Is there anyone here in favor of this petition? Is there anyone here opposed to this petition? So do you think they met the requirements of 86423B? Have they divided it in such a matter that's provided for um, so we can make a finding that the proposed lot specifically access parking and yard area uh, have been maximized by this particular uh, change? I don't know how else you do it, but I'm just concerned about that easement. And in the easement, I would think that the board uh, or a site plan review maybe gets the opportunity to look at or the easement be filed with the board because that's got to be an express condition that the access easement exists prior to the... Absolutely. <clears throat> Separation of utilities. Yeah, separate utilities. Easement. Of course, yeah. yeah. I, mean, it's got, yeah. I mean, we haven't gotten there yet, but I would think those would be the things that you'd, we'd want to think about. Separate yep. utilities, affidavit filed. Mm -hmm. Yep. And, and I would just add that the size of the easement is just to restrict it to pedestrian use only. So it's not going to be vehicular use. Um, yeah, no. It's, a, geez, it's not even. I wasn't even yeah. thinking about no. that. But Jeff. but I know there was a comment earlier about the size of the easement. I mean that that was strictly. The, well, no. The, what I'm thinking of what we've done, be, what has happened, and it happened, with, is that they did just what you did here with this line right along the right along the bulkhead. Guy walks out the door, can't go because it's the guy. So we need to make sure we have an easement that they oh, yes. can get around there. It's absolutely and I'm, required. And that's why I'm asking you the size of it yeah. because you got a guy like me that eats too much on a Saturday night. Maybe I won't fit there. No, that, that's why the easement's there, and then the division line between the two lots is strictly, um, is, is basically right al along the line of how the properties are used now. Um, there's really no significant change, or no yeah. change at all. I, I, the plan's very good. It, it shows exactly what we're looking at doing here, right? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to make a motion to approve. Okay. John Frank, motion to grant with the conditions being separate utilities? Separate utilities. Uh, does it need, do we need to do site plan on this? We can. I think I think it's as the plan reads. It seems fine. The access easement needs to be filed. Okay. Separate utilities. Mark is mark is to be placed along Permanent the markers. No fence. No fence. No, no fence. fence. So 
So are you are you putting? He's in? making the motion. These are his conditions of his motion. I know, but did you or did you not put in a site plan? I didn't. I don't. I don't. I don't think. All right. So bring that up during. If somebody seconds it during the discussion, if you want site plan. It's fair. I'll second it so we can get to that point. Okay. No offenses. Okay, we have a second by Joe Pereira. Any discussion on the motion? Joe, do you have some discussion I, I, on the motion? I'm just, uh, again, I just, I see the building inspector getting called out at 2.30 on a Sunday afternoon on a hot summer day just because there's some ambiguity over the easement. That's all. Hmm? So I don't know if site plan review is, is worth it or not. Right. That's fine, yeah. I, I don't have a problem with that. I just didn't. Okay. Could, yes, is it yes. too late for me to make a suggestion? Sure. Could we bound the easement as well and make it clear where the extent of the easement is? Well, that's, I, what, well, that's where we want the mark. Yes. I thought you were looking for the no, mark. No, both. I, I guess both. Oh, just not this so, division of the property. So, so okay. if that's, well. so he makes a good point. Yes, so yeah. the boundaries for yeah. the easement, so they be, That'll they, make they be delineated on, the, on, the, on site. De facto, you know where the easement is. Okay. Sure. And, right. and, and that being the case, uh, I'll, I'll take site plan review off the table okay so now John's amended motion access easement to be filed with the board uh, separate utilities no fences permanent markers to be placed on property line and easement and definition of the easement as well yeah, the, the, bounds, the easement yeah. defined bound yep. yep permanent markers I said yep. defining the property line and the easement so that should eliminate, and if they can't deal with that, then they've got a problem being landowners. <laughs> so, John Frank's motion as amended, second by Joe Pereira. Any discussion on that motion? Hearing none. Ricky Sahadi. Yes. Uh, Dan Dupere. Yes. Joe Pereira. Yes. John Frank. Yes. Chairman aside. Yes. Okay. Special permits granted with those conditions. Hey, you're not. Are you done? You got another one, don't you? I got uh, yeah, I got three more. Just one. No, no. I just, I just wanted to make. I thought you were walking out. No, Paul M. Levesque, 79 Reservoir Street, Lot L764, variance request to build a house addition, waiving setback requirements in an S single-family district. Paul Levesque, 79 Reservoir Street, Lot L764. All right, we'll come back to Mr. Levesque before the end of the meeting. Number six, Kevin Oliveira, 334 Vail Street, lot E150. Variance request to divide the existing lot into two lots, leaving the existing five-family dwelling with 3,100 square feet uh, lot and existing commercial building on a 3,658 square foot lot, waiving all zoning requirements in the DL local business district. Good evening. For the record, Jeff Tolman from Northeast Engineers and Consultants. Um, I'm here representing Kevin Oliveira, the petitioner for the variance application for 334 Vale Street. Uh, the property is located on the southeast corner of Vale and Slade. It's located in the local business BL zoning district, which requires 50 feet of frontage and 5,000 square foot of area. The, currently is pro uh, the, the property is currently assessed as a mixed-use property, being commercial and residential. Um, the property size itself is 6,758 square feet, with 62 feet of frontage on Slade and another 109 uh, feet of frontage on Vale Street. The re residential component of the property <coughs> is represented by the existing five-family dwelling, shown as 334 Vale Street which is located on the northern portion of the property. The commercial component is the existing 1,012 square foot commercial building located on the southwest uh, portion of the property. Due to the commercial nature um, of this property, it's not, th this, unlike the last application, is not subject to section 86, 423B, since it's not entirely residential. So we have filed the variance application to divide this property into two lots, um, one lot for the residential use and one lot for the commercial use. Uh, this property was granted a variance back in 1989 uh, for this same uh, division. 
Uh, the owner of the property at that time never went forward with the A and R to divide the property, so it remained as a single lot. So now, um, again, we're just here tonight um, to basically renew that application if possible to divide this property into the two lots as shown on the plan. Um, as you can see, the commercial lot, lot two, uh, we would be providing four, four off-street parking spaces to the rear of the building. Uh, that area is currently just used for storage of materials and um, whatever else is needed. But that would be converted into a parking area um, if this application were to be approved. So with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions that the board might have. So that's going to be in the local business district, the BL lot right. two. You don't know the current use now. The the um, the current use of the commercial well currently the commercial building is not being used. It was last used as the base for Atlantic Home Improvement. Um, I believe that was within the past year or so. They were using that as a place of business. And the existing five family is providing no Wall Street parking. That's correct. Well, there, I'm sorry. There is one parking spot located just to the south of the uh, of the building. There is a second spot that. If you, you can see the oh, curb cut there on one, Vail. That number one is one off-street That's one off-street parking spot. We would be taking away a second spot that's currently used by the existing five-family dwelling in order to provide the access to, to get behind the commercial building to provide the four off-street parking spaces. And the other thing I would like to add, too, if need be, what we could do is there's an existing curb cut located in front of the existing commercial building. You can, as you can see where the 59-foot dimension is, uh, you'll see the break in the curb there. We could certainly reinstall uh, granite curbing in that location, um, which would provide additional Wall Street parking spaces. That gap on Vale Street from the point, looks like you have curbing. <coughs> Uh, yeah, there's a small normally, section of curbing. Yeah, that's correct. missing. They have 59 yep. feet. Yep, that's correct. Is that are the parking spaces being used now for the five family? Yes. But there's a curb cut along that entire stretch. Not along the entire stretch. You can see where the, you have a double line where the actual yeah. curbing is. It's yeah. kind of I know it's tough to see on the plan, but there is. Um, there is a little break where the existing parking area is, then there's another section of curbing in front of the commercial building, then it stops again, and basically there's no curbing between where that stop is and the, uh, the property line, or just short of the property line. That's all open. We don't know a use. We don't have a use on the on the commercial hop now. No. How can we? Uh, well. no, that's what he's asking. He said, "I want to make this commercial lot. I want this building that was used for commercial, and I want to give it four parking spaces." He's creating a commercial lot that says, "I have a building that hasn't been used. It's in the BL district. That's a, and the commercial use, ha I guess, has to be." conforming to the uses in the Whatever's BL in district. The yeah. Yeah. And we've got this five-family dwelling that's there also. Um, but the, the, the five-family dwelling, my recollection is that's a non-conforming use in the BL district. Uh, in the BL district, uh, you can have a maximum of three units. And they've got a five unit, so it's a pre-existing non-conforming for the BL district. So this particular, you have the whole thing being pre-existing, non-conforming. So the question is, what do you want to do by way of a variance? Now, this has to be done by a variance. Have they met shape, topography, soil conditions? Is there a hardship uh, that's in the property that requires us to grant or that we should consider for a variance? Otherwise, if they don't meet the Section 10 requirements, then they don't, shouldn't get the variance. I mean, we've heard that argument several times tonight. So.
Oh, is there anyone here? Did I ask? Is anyone in favor? Anyone opposed? Okay. So, members of the board, what do you want to do? Have they met the requirements of 48 Section 10 to grant the variance? Was there shape, topography, soil condition? Was there a hardship? Is it for the public good, or does it meet some of the other requirements that we've heard this evening that it's uh, self-serving, uh, self-imposed, therefore it shouldn't be, uh, shouldn't be granted? When was the commercial building, the commercial section, last used as business? Within the past year, I believe. Really? Okay. Yes. And again, it was the Atlantic Home Improvement. Um, it was their place of business. It's been assessed, this property has been assessed as, as mixed use commercial residential for as long um, as the, the records indicate online. So certainly the owner didn't create the situation. He's just trying to separate. No, he didn't create it, but he's yeah. trying to separate it. But yeah. by separating it, he's creating the, the issue that's being presented before the board. And that one that was granted not that it matters to us now. No. 1989. Yeah, no, I was just trying to see if there was anything special in that. That. So, I don't know, motion to grant, motion to deny. Let's move it along. The lot size is the minimum lot size in the area is uh, 5,000 square feet. This is 6,000. Um, based on lot size, I, I have to make a motion to deny. All right, Joe Pereira, motion to deny. Do I have a second? Second. Second, John Frank. Any discussion on that motion? Hearing none, Ricky Sahadi. Motion to deny. Motion to deny. No. No. Yes. Yeah. Dan Dupere, yes. Joe Pereira. Yes. John Frank. Yes. Chairman Assad, yes. So the vote is four to one. Uh, the motion to grant the variance is denied. Thank you. <laughs> Agenda item number seven. Walter Cabral, 17 Colfax Street, M717. Variance request to divide the parcel into two lots, leaving existing two family with 3,275 square feet on one lot, an existing auto repair shop with 6,364 square feet on the second lot, waiving zoning requirements in the BN neighborhood shopping district. Okay, good evening for the record, Jeff Tolman from Northeast Engineers Consultants. Um, this particular application is very similar to the previous one. Um, in some manners, in some manners it isn't. Um, what we have here is uh, a variance application for 17 Colfax Street, um, which also th th there's an existing commercial use or component on this property, which is 1020 Locust Street, which is currently and has been used for many years. Uh, it's currently used as an existing auto repair facility. With an expired license. Oh, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, currently, the, the lot size is 9,638 square feet with 100 feet of frontage on Colfax and 96.40 feet of frontage on Locust Street. Again, the residential component, this is the mixed-use property. Residential component is the existing two-family um, dwelling shown at 17 Colfax Street, and the, ex the commercial component is uh, 1020 Locust Street. Um, the, the application that's be before you tonight is to divide the property into two lots, um, as shown on the plan, lot one being the residential lot, which is 3,275 square feet, and lot two being the commercial lot, which is 6,364 square feet. The lots that you see on this plan is exactly how the uh, property is currently being used. There's an existing chain link fence um, that runs along the pro uh, proposed division line. Um, as similar to the last project, this, this, um, this property had received a variance back in 2003 uh, to do the, the same exact division that you're seeing here. Um, 
at that point, it was the, the owner didn't realize that the next step of the phase, and he wasn't um, advised that the next step of the phase would have to be the a &R plan to go along with the division. He thought once he got the variance, he, it was divided. Um, so it was never formally divided back in 2003. So that's why we're back before you tonight for the variance application. So I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Again, no off-street parking being provided for the two-family dwelling. That's Is correct. that correct? Yes. There's, there's none being used now for the two-family, and there's none proposed. And you've got that, well, you could move the chain link fence into the existing asphalt area and getting some mm -hmm. if you choose. Is that correct, or is that some prohibition? My recollection, I don't know anything about any soil or lot size over there. I mean, it, the, I know the, the building, I know the house. Uh, yeah, the, um, if need be, um, you know, I'm sure a couple of off-street parking spots could be provided with the relocation of the fence. No, I'm asking. I'm asking the question. I don't know whether or not because as I drive by and I know mm -hmm. the location. Yes. Uh, does that take away? Is that going to be a problem that I'm going to have? Well, it would certainly interfere with about. the current use of the commercial property if it were required. But um, physically, it could be done. Dave, you're saying down on the Locust Street side? On the Colfax Street side. On the Colfax Street, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. But well, you'd have to pull the fence. Yeah, they'd have to pull the fence up. Yeah. <clears throat> and change the division. Yeah, if that's something you want. I mean, but you see the way the fence goes, it, ch it really encompasses the commercial mm -hmm. the, uh, use. The other component is in this BN district, uh, multifamily, uh, isn't a lot. So that's a pre-existing, non-conforming. While the while the auto repair is, is a conforming use. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it kind of uh, makes sense to get rid of the two family dwelling out of the singular lot but I'm just cons my only concern is off street parking locust and colfax because that's always a it's always busy yeah All right. is there anyone here in favor of this petition is there anyone here opposed to this petition okay so that's what we got uh, I don't know whether or not they're sharing utilities if we need to make a separate uh I mean, it, won't, it won't hurt. Uh, Jeff, do you know if there's I believe they separate are separated, but if you wanted to make it part of the, um, okay. you know, the motion, okay. that's fine as well. But it, uh, it's my understanding they are separate. Okay. And I, I would say having... I mean, yeah, go ahead. Ask me. Um, having grown up on Colfax Street and lived there 20-plus years, I, I know there's adequate off-street parking on Colfax Street. Yeah, no, uh, but it's just, you know, you've got the two family and now you've got... Right. Not in the same ownership, two different owners... I don't, again, I don't want the building inspector or the police being called because there's no parking over there. Now you can't park, and that's all I'm, that's one of my concerns. But you've already got the fencing, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, no, I mean, so the, the, physical, the physical stuff is there, yeah. but it's all by one owner. So I don't know whether or not who's living in the two fit. Yeah. I just don't know the dynamics of it. Um, but you know that it's going to be someone different living someone, there, yeah. and that's what I get concerned about. Mm -hmm. But, okay. Motion to grant, motion to deny, motion with uh, conditions, or did they meet the, did he meet, because uh, it's a variance, shape, topography, soil conditions, hardship, public good. Uh, it's really what de facto was on the lot, where you've got that combined use that's causing, how do you get, how do you do it? You can't do it under a special permit. It has to be by variance. It has variance. to be a variance. Yeah. And you've got the establishment already of the division between the two uses. You know, I laugh about the existing concrete patio that extends. I love from that, yeah. Hmm. So. Motion to grant with the, um, with the condition of 
making sure the utilities are, are separated and, and recorded as such. Except for you say no action on parking. Okay. So that's Joe Pereira's motion, motion to grant with separate utilities to be uh, affidavit to be filed. If they've already separated them, I guess you can do an affidavit that they've already been separated, but at least we've got it uh, so I don't have the new owner saying, hey, it's not separated. And, uh, so motion, that's Joe's motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. Dan Dupere, any discussion on the motion? Hearing none. Ricky Sahadi. Yes. Dan Dupere. Yes. Joe Pereira. Yes. John Frank. Yes. Chairman Assad. Yes. Okay, that's granted with that condition, Jeff. Agenda item number eight. Back in the game, LLC. 542, 546 4th Street, lot I-1244. Special permit request uh, pursuant to section 86423B to divide the parcel into two lots leaving the existing three family on a 2145 square foot lot and a five family on lot four on a lot of 4605 square uh, feet waiving all zoning requirements in an A2 apartment district. Okay, good evening for the record Jeff Tolman from Northeast Engineers and Consultants here on behalf of Back in the Game LLC the petitioner for the special permit application for 542 546 4th Street. Uh, the property is located in the A2 zoning district. The uh, property currently has 6,750 square feet with 50.85 feet of frontage on 4th Street. What we're proposing to do is to divide it into two lots pursuant to section 86423B, uh, leaving the existing three-family dwelling, number 542, um, on lot one, and leaving um, the existing five family, which is 546 4th Street on lot two. Uh, this one what is not as easy as the one on Linden Street in terms of the division line, but I think what is before you tonight is, is currently how the property is used. Um, we are providing a, a, an access and parking easement, um, proposing that on lot two, which would be for the benefit of lot one. There's two parking, off-street parking spots that you can see there. That, that would be for the use of lot one in the, the um, existing parking spaces to the rear um, would be for the benefit of the existing five family, the, the five parking spaces to the rear. Um, we'd also, in order to be able to make the turn in and out of those parking spaces, we need a second access easement, uh, which would be on lot one for the benefit of lot two uh, for man maneuvering purposes. So. Um, I know on this particular property the utilities are combined. Uh, they are not separated, so that would have to definitely be a condition, which I'm sure it would have been anyways. Um, but other than that, I'd be happy to answer any questions that the board might have. The three-family dwelling is going to have two off-street parking, but that's going to be granted by way of an access and parking easement. That's correct. correct. Yes, that's that would be on lot That's shown one. to the right. On that's correct. Plan, right. Yes. And then. The existing five family is going to have five off street parking spaces. Directly in front of the building. Right in, yes. front, of the, right in yes. front of the building, but the access is all going to be off 4th Street. Off 4th Street. That's going to be the common driveway, correct? That's, uh, yes. Uh, that, that, the access easement on lot two is for the benefit of both properties. I mean, they both are, in essence. They're, they're, they're going to swap rights. So. I got it. So lot one, as it exists, is going to be the three family, and that's going to be the dominant estate because that's going to have an access easement to the Servian estate for lot number two. That's going to say lot number one, you can pass and repass along this access easement. You can park two motor vehicles, but you also have access in the, so what is it, the easterly side of the property uh, to go. It's going to be a shared access easement there for both of them. Yes. So whatever, it, it really is. whatever that bump out is in the back, whether it's a deck or a uh, bulkhead it's or something. It's a bulkhead, yes. So they'll be able to go through that access even. I, mean, I don't know what the distance is. Um, it's like eight, uh, eight feet wide, approximately. That's eight feet wide? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And the one thing I, I did realize when I was looking at the plan tonight, the frontages on the lots um, was not labeled. The frontage on lot two is 17.85 feet, and the frontage on lot one is 33 feet. So that's how they broke so, down. So let's get that. So the ax frontage for lot number two is? 
17.85 feet. 17.85, and this one is going to be 50.85 minus 17, so that's going to be 33. 30, yeah. 33. Okay. You sure about that, Jeff? I mean, I, that's the mathematics of it, but I'm saying is because we. Yeah. Yes? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Put me on the spot here. No, no, I just want to make sure. I mean, if we're yes. on the record, we put it in the, yes. the decision. I want to make sure we've got the right numbers because the plan, uh, when it, well, you know it. When the Form A plan shows up, I don't want somebody saying, hey, you're off by and come back and get relief. Um, all right. So that's what we have before as members of the board. Anybody here in favor of this petition? Anyone here opposed to this petition? Okay. Uh, members of the board, what do you want to do? Do we have a motion to grant, motion to deny? I'll make a motion to grant. Motion to grant, John Frank. Conditions, separate uh, utilities. Separate utilities. The easement uh, gets parking in. The parking in uh, access easement. Yeah, it has to be shown in the deeds. Have to be shown in the deeds. Have to be shown in the uh, deeds and, get, okay. No fence. No <laughs> fence. Uh, boundary markers, permanent boundary markers. Permanent boundary And it's the markers, it, again, like the other one, markers for the boundaries and markers for the easement. Yes. And I guess the only easement that needs to really be, because the access, that easement is there, it's going to be the 318-foot square access easement that needs to be Oh, I guess not. No, they both have no, I guess not, because it's going to be that property, lot number one, will have its dimension, and it's going to be that eight-foot wide rectangle that's going to be. Yeah. Swing yeah. Into the okay. So that's your, that's your motion. Yep. We have a second on John Frank's motion. Second. Second, Ricky Sahadi. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none. Ricky Sahadi. Yes. Dan Dupere. Yes. Joe Pereira. No. Joe Pereira, no. Uh, John Frank. Yes. Chairman aside, yes. Four to one, that happens. Okay. Agenda item number nine. Uh, 577 609 Duval Street, care of attorney Peter A. Solino. 535 577 609 Duval Street, lots. 02210. 14 and 0235. This is a variance and special permit request pursuant to section 86425 to raise the existing mill building and construct a six story mixed use commercial and residential structure, waiving all setbacks and parking requirements. Applicant also seeks a special permit to construct residential units in the commercial mill district uh, and H1 district. Good evening. Good evening. For purposes of the record, Peter Salino, lawyer at 550 Locust Street here in Fall River. With me is Julie Bartlett, ZDS Architects, who's the architect on the project. Um, so by way of introduction here, the property is on the southerly, uh, I guess it would be the southeasterly corner of Turner and Duval Street. It's a uh, vacant mill building, a parking lot to the south and then a recently acquired parking lot, which is lot five. So at the time of application, the record would reflect that our client owned the uh, map 022 lots 10 and 14, and then there was a purchase and sale agreement submitted to indicate that lot five was under agreement. Uh, per the records at the Registry of Deeds, lot five closed on 519. The proposal is to demolish the existing structure to reconstruct 56 apartments thereon. Uh, the proposal includes first level retail, parking underneath, parking on uh, or to the south in the uh, merger of one of the lots, the assessor's lot number 14, as well as number five. In my analysis of the case, I think the commercial use is allowed by right in a, in a uh, mill district. Uh, we have sufficient frontage in as much as we have more than 100 feet, and we have sufficient area. So I think what we're talking about this evening are going to be setbacks, unit count, and parking. And so I've phrased my arguments in the alternative, 
uh, in that I've checked both the variance box and the special permit box. So across the board, I would submit to you that there is certainly a hardship due and owing to the irregular shape of this lot. The lot at the north is 80 feet wide. At the south is only 50 feet wide. It's bounded on the east by the existing railroad track and on the west by the sidewalk along the Wall Street, which has granite curbing. Um, additionally, it's in a flood zone, which really constrains the construction and parking underneath the building. Um, and finally, I think the location of the I know that, but I couldn't find it on your plan, the flood zone line. Fair. Right, so, but uh, I, just by curiosity, I thought it was. And okay. I confirmed And that. I should say for the record that Mr. Giosa uh, was supposed to be here tonight, but tested positive this morning, so he's not. Um, and he could have spoken probably better than I can to that component of it. Um, so, as far as the arguments, with regard to the special permit for setbacks. I think you can look at it as a reconstruction under Section 425. Uh, I think that it is no more non-conforming than what is there. In fact, we get a little bit better when you look at the proposal. Uh, currently, there is no front setback. The building is on the sidewalk, and the proposal is to keep it there. On the north, we only have 1.1 feet of setback. We're proposing six, so we get better. On the south, we have uh, 36, we're going to 30, but 30 still beats the requirement by 20, because it's a 10-foot requirement. Wasn't that your Exhibit A? My Exhibit A, yes. You yeah, have it there? I do. Okay. I thought that would be a helpful chart. It was so, very It was so very good. I want to keep, keep my presentation to three minutes. Um, <laughs> and in the, in the rear, uh, we currently have 3.7, and we're going to 5.3, so we're getting better. So it's submitted from a special permit perspective that what we're proposing is no more non-conforming than what's there. If you want to look at it from the variance perspective, then I've already said to you, I think the hardship here is the shape of the lot. Um, and I think this is merited given the structure and the fact that it really could use revitalizing. With respect to the units uh, in my Exhibit A that Chairman Assad is talking about, I made reference to the use table. Uh, we're seeking more than 20 units which in a CMD is only allowed by a special permit. And so that's why we're asking for the special permit with respect to units. And then finally, with respect to parking. So if you look at it again as a special permit, I think under 455, we can ask for a special permit uh, to reduce the parking requirements. Um, I noted in my documentation that there is street parking. I think the proposal promotes the overall rehabilitation of a dilapidated structure. Uh, one of the things in the bylaw talks about is, would the reduction uh, create a safety hazard, safety issue? And I think the answer to that question is no, uh, specifically because the concept here is with the train station just north of this location, we're seeking commuters and people that don't necessarily have two cars per unit. Um, but again, if you want to look at it as a variance, then I think the unique shape here is the hardship. How do we put parking into that site more than we've already laid out? So again, per the plan, we have 31 spaces under the proposed building, 31 spaces outside of the proposed building to the south um, for a total of 62. Uh, finally, for my presentation, and then I'm going to turn it over to Julie, I do not think this is detrimental or has a negative impact. In fact, I think it's consistent and harmonious with the waterfront development uh, scheme that we're trying to see in the city of Fall River. And I certainly don't think it derogates from the intention of the bylaw. It's entirely consistent with the neighborhood. Mr. Karam did a nice project at the next corner. This is consistent with that. In fact, Julie's firm was the architect on that project. And I think that's a good segue so Thank Julie you. can talk about the building and show you some plans and drawings of what is proposed. I do have um, a full set of plans that I can just sort of focus on the, the ground floor plan, which shows as, uh, start, as Peter started to depict. We have some 31 parking spaces at grade with no building above it. Uh, it will be one-way parking, ingress and egress heading north. Um, and then we'll have additional parking under the building, 31 additional spaces at grade under the building. We also have a residential lobby access from both the street and from the parking under the building. Uh, approximately 27, 2800 square foot retail tenant on the northmost side of the structure and ideally another smaller 700, 750 square foot tenant on the south side of the structure. This may turn into an amenity uh, you know, as we continue to develop the project with the, with the um, tenants that we may find. 
um, trash to the rear, and then a, the building, I, we do feel, responds to the, the goals of the waterfront district. It's a six story, it'll be, um, the intention is sort of a five stories of likely wood or light gauge steel construction over a podium style construction on the first floor. Um, trying to respond to the shape of this unique shape of the site with a narrow um, building to the rear with some sort of a charcoal gray cladding, we're thinking fiber, uh, medium density fiber cement, and then projections on the front to capture um, greater views to the water and um, screening the parking with something uh, slightly different, allowing for a rooftop opportunities to view have the views of this waterfront district, both from a tenant perspective, some tenants would have balconies and, and rooftop opportunities, and then we would also offer amenities on these other levels as well for fitness, um, potentially a you know, uh, clubhouse style. Uh, these are 56 mix of one, two, and three bedroom units, market rate, um, looking to sort of offer a variety of, of types of room units to the neighborhood. Okay. I'm happy to answer any questions. Architecturally, you, you've got your proposal. That's what you want to do. Parking underneath, going up. Uh, units, uh, one bedroom, two bedroom? A mix. mix. One, two, and a couple of three bedroom couple units three. as well. Something that we felt isn't in the neighborhood right now and might be marketed quite well. And market rent apartments. They're not Correct. condos. Correct. Yes. Market rent Rental. apartments. Okay. Income stream. Good. Okay. Is all the parking for the residents, or are you going to have some for the commercial? We that haven't really gotten that detailed because we don't know what the commercial is um, as of yet. So I think that naturally there needs to be some commercial parking there, but I just don't know what the uses are going to be to really drill down on that part of it. So there's 56 proposed residential apartments. They've got at least one to one there. Mm -hmm. And they got, you know, what are Again, sure they maintain that. Huh? I, I'm just, my concern is to make sure that, that at least 56 is maintained. I mean, yeah, no, I think I, it has to be one to one. I mean, right. I don't know. Okay. But part of the, I see Mr. Fiola back there. Maybe he's got something he wants to say about the project. Maybe he has We haven't gotten to that stage yet, right? Yeah. No, no, but I'm, I'm right just now? thinking. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. No, Peter's doing a fine job. No, no, so that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, step the, the, the one question is the, on the master plan, does it have on-street parking down there. There's no, I, I don't think there's any on-street parking. Is there going to be on-street parking down there yeah. after it's all set so, and done, so, right? So maybe I can just fill you in on the, the big picture, right? So. Well, that's why you're here. <laughs> so uh, for, for the record, Ken Fayola, Executive uh, Vice President, Bristol County Economic Development Consultants, resident of Fall River. Um, so as you know, we've been working on this whole waterfront revitalization plan for 20 years. Okay, trying to suppress the elevated route, uh, section of Route 79, bring that down to grade level, uh, create more at surface access ways from you know Turner Street and other streets across across the Wall Street to the waterfront. <clears throat> I'm happy to report today um, that the project itself has been fully funded. The overall cost of the project is 112 million dollars. There's a hundred million dollar allocation from the state, a 12 million dollar allocation from the city. A large component of the $12 million uh, allocation from the city is for already uh, scheduled CSO repairs. So it's not things that are new. These are things that were gonna ha have to happen as part of the CSO project. What we're doing is just accelerating them now so that when the state is doing its section of the project, we don't have to come back and dig it all up and put in the CSO stuff. So the 19 acres that are going to be created as a result of the suppression of the, uh, the elevated section of Route 79 is going to uh, be 19, it's going to result in 19 developable acres. We're looking to project probably about 1.1 million square feet of uh, development space along that 19 acres. We want to have the, the units there, and this is obviously subject to change and further input and everything else through master planning, but at least our initial uh, intent there is to keep the buildings five to six stories, similar to this and similar to uh, Mr. Karam and Bacos Bank's building. 
so that we're not blocking views from the highland and the, the, the areas that are going up the hill there. So interestingly enough, in this area here, um, in front of Mr. Cameron's building as well as this, there's going to be a parcel of land there, and that's going to be where the CSO chamber is located, and it's going to be located underneath the new parcel of land that's being created. <coughs> Excuse me, and as a result of the CSO <coughs> chamber being there, we're not going to be able to put any buildings there, right? Because you can't build upon the CSO chamber. So that's going to be flat. It's going to be a flat surface lot, and it's also going to offer more parking in the future. So any overflow parking for the commercial aspect of this building will be able to park there. Any overflow parking for Mr. Cameron's, although he's fully, he's fully deeded and approved, could also park there. And both of these buildings will have unobstructed views to the waterfront just to the north of the, uh, of the Cove restaurant. This particular project is about, you know, I don't know, uh, Julie, I don't want to, you know, it's about 25 million is what we're estimating. So this is not a cheap project. This is going to be a first class operation. And it's we're, what we're accomplishing here is exactly what we hope to accomplish, right? Outside investment, market rate housing. We're not displacing anybody from housing. We're bringing in new, um, you know, new uh, housing options for people from within the city, from outside the city. And a lot of this is occurring not only because of the 112 million dollars that we're going to be revitalizing the waterfront with, but also within a quarter mile you have the rail. So the plan, after 20 years, is slowly coming to fruition. And you have people from the private sector, whether it's beforehand was Mr. Karam and Bacos Bank, and now you have Vitaly Fedesik, an outside investor from Boston, who's coming down, and they believe in the vision, and they're coming here and they're making the investment. And I can tell you right now that <coughs> so I'm dealing with right now, not on the waterfront, but throughout the city. I have, um, I'm dealing with um, clients that probably represent another 500 units of market housing, right? And everybody says, well, how many, so how, how come so many units? Because the demand is there. Adams House, leased right up. Commonwealth Landing has a waiting list. Residents at River's Edge, right, you know, stones throw away from this project, is already leased up. The demand is there. So people are taking notice of the demand and now invested in these mills, mills along One Middle Street, mills along um, Glow Mills Ave, the old, pine, the old um, Duro properties. Those are all being looked at for conversion and historic tax credits and everything else. So not only is it occurring on the waterfront, but now it's occurring in other areas of the city and taking underperforming pieces of property, turning them into valuable assets for the city no longer neglected properties and providing housing opportunities for people from all, you know, from inside and outside the area. So this particular project, I think, is a great project. Obviously, I'm here to speak in support of it. Um, we think that this is going to be a bellwether project. It's going to lead to additional investment along the waterfront. And it's a, you know, I did the design you see, it's a first class design. It's something unique and different to Fall River. And I think it's something that, uh, at the end of the day, as well for our residents, we can all be proud of. So, I'm an advocate. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Attorney Solito. I don't know if I can do it better than that, Mr. Chairman. Um, so I'll take any other specific questions, but I think we've presented adequately and on the areas that need presentation. So, any questions? We'll be happy but I think answer. we can. I think the board, if they act under each component as a special permit gets you everything that you need without going through the variance. I agree, but I want it to come No, no, I'm, I'm, a, no I'm, asking you the, I'm asking you the question because yes. this is a large project and I don't want you coming back and say, ah, we should have gotten, I mean, everything that I've looked at, I don't have any. It's not COVID, water. she's fine. I, I tested. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> 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 so sorry. So if we, so if the board acts on each component as a special permit, Grant, you will be satisfied and your client will be satisfied. We don't have, right. I just don't, I, the thought of you coming back, if there's something that you think is, because I don't see it. I don't see I don't anything see it questionable. Either. I think uh, special so I think permit gets you there. Special permit and gets you there and you're done. Yep. Okay. So, all right. Is there any, other than Mr. Fiola, is anyone here in favor of this petition? Attorney Gregory Brilliant. Attorney Gregory Brilliant. Um, 477 Wilson Road. 
Um, I know the principal of the uh, LLC has been a friend of mine for over 20 years, and they're very, very reputable people, well funded, and they really are excited about coming into Forever and doing this project, as Ken uh, very eloquently stated. Um, and I do think it would be uh, just a great addition to get rid of, you know, a major eyesore of the city down there and clean that, that whole area up. It's, you know, kind of a mess. I, I've been helping Vitaly because the people are throwing junk in there and we're repeatedly right now trying to get mattresses out of there and so forth and so on. I think this would be a, you know, a great, great project for the city of Florida. Thank you, Mr. Chen. Okay. Thank you, Attorney Brilliant. Is there anyone else? Okay. Hearing no one else, members of the board, I think that we can act on each component uh, as a special permit um, without going through the variance parts of it. So step one for the special permits, we have to have a finding that this project is not more detrimental to the neighborhood than what currently exists there. I'll so make a motion. we start with that. So John Frank makes a motion that this particular project is not more detrimental than the current use that's on there. Second. Second, Joe Pereira. Any discussion on that motion? Hearing none. Ricky Sahadi. Yes. Dan Dupere. Yes. Joe Pereira. Yes. John Frank. Yes. Chairman aside, yes. So we get that component out of the way. Um, the unit count to 56 proposed resident, 56 is the number that you need, yes? That is correct, of the residential, Of the yes. re 56 re proposed residential apartments. Do we find that that would be an adequate number to grant a special permit for this particular project? Not more than 56 proposed residential apartments. Uh, we don't have a mix of one, two, or three, but 56 proposed residential apartments. He didn't have the mix, I asked. That would be my motion. Uh, not more than 56 and also not less than 56 on the parking. Okay. So, motion 50, 56 with not less than 56 parking spaces. Okay? So that's John Frank's motion. Do I have a second? Dan. Second, Dan Dupere. Any discussion on that motion? Site plan is a given. Well, you put it in, put it, put it in to make sure we get site plan review. Site plan. So it's amended to include site plan. Is that okay, Dan? Yes. Okay, site plan review. Any further discussion on that motion? Hearing none. Ricky Sahadi? Yes. Dan Dupere? Yes. Joe Pereira? Yes. John Frank? Yes. Chairman Assad? Yes. Uh, parking, we need a special permit for the reduction in parking. Is that correct, Peter? That is correct. And so the reduction in parking should be, I think, what was the equation? It should be 82? 62. 62. 62. 62 units, and we're coming up with a total of no, 62 no, parking 62 spaces, parking 56, space, units. 56 units. Yep. Okay, so that reduction, so that reduction, uh, correct, 62 units for 62 parking spaces for, for 56, 56 for residential units, units. and we correct. made part of that minimum of 56 parking spaces. So, is that your motion, John? Yes, for that. So John Frank's motion is 62 parking spaces. Yes. 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 Okay. That was Second. included. That was included. That was in the, yeah, that the first one. The first one was not less than 56. This one is the total parking spaces. What's on the plan? Showing What's on the plan? Dan Dupay a second. Yes. Yes. Any discussion on that motion? Hearing none. Ricky Sahadi. Yes. Dan Dupay. Yes. Joe Pereira. Yes. John Frank. Yes. Chairman Assad. Yes. I think that's all the relief that you need. That is, is that what we correct? need. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Good luck. I'll be right back. Thank, Thank, yep. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Exhibit A was good, Peter. Thank you. Uh, agenda item number 10, 1148 Duval Street, care, oh, care of attorney Peter Solino. 1148 Duval Street at 2012 Remington Avenue, lot S22, 6 and 2. Motion to extend time for relief previously granted in the decision made June 25th, 2020 for a period of one year commencing July 31st, 2022. Yeah, so to be clear on this, uh, well, for the record, Peter Salino, 550 Locust Street, Fall River, attorney for the petitioner. Um, factually, we have a special permit here that was granted in June of 20, and my concern was that it would expire in two years coming up now. And I'm happy to be told that 
due to tolling or COVID or some other legislative act um, <laughs> that were extended and we don't need what I'm asking for, but I just wanted to make sure I preserved it for the client. So that was the genesis of the ask. No. So there is that COVID. I think it's the 462 additional days that need to get added on. Yep. Uh, and I know Joe Pereira raised that at one, one of the meetings when I was away. What do you hear you don't need it for? But if the board wants to act to say yes, just for belt and braces, uh, we, I guess we can do that. Belt and suspenders. Yeah. Braces, suspenders, same. No, braces, that's it. Yeah. I'm old. <laughs> um. I mean, if it's 462. No, no, but I think that was the number as I was doing the research about the COVID and the permitting. Okay. But. So to me, either the record reflects that we don't need it because of some COVID thing, or. So let me say this. If we, if we calculate wrong, if I run out of fingers yep. and toes, and it doesn't apply, and the period has lapsed, the board doesn't have the authority to grant you that extension. But if we do, then I think the board should grant the one-year one extension year. to it and have it nailed down for us. So moved. Second. Okay, anybody here in favor? Anyone here opposed? Here. John. Yeah. John Frank made the motion. Do we have a second? Second. Oh. Joe Pereira, second. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none. Ricky Sahadi. Yes. Dan Dupere. Yes. Joe Pereira. Yes. John Fred. No, no, don't be going yet. Don't put your pens away. We're going to go back to the one that the guy didn't come. Yeah. Chairman yeah. aside, yes. So that one is one year grant, and it's the one year grant from whenever it was going to expire. Yep. Okay. All right. Thank you all. Thank you. So let's go back to number five Peter M. Levesque, Jr., 79 Reservoir Street, Lot L764. Variance request to build a house addition waiving setback requirements in an S single family district. Now, our rules and regulations say that he, sh he should be here, but the board does have the authority to act on the petition. He didn't show up. Now, can we table it and just reach out to him to see if just we, we can, his mind? We, we can certainly do that if that's what the board wants to do, or the board can act based on what's in front of us, what he submitted in writing. So I'll leave that to the board. If, if we want to get it off the agenda we can look at what he submitted and say yes no maybe so or we can say come back at another day or you didn't show up so your petitions denied mm -hmm. all of that I didn't do it he was he never showed up because of it being a, a uh, because of it being a off meeting a change date meeting i would yeah. put in a request just to uh i'll make a motion to uh table it for the next meeting with notice to the individual i second okay so does that mean the next meeting being next week's meeting no it can't or be it can't be next no july is <laughs> because it has to be advertised yeah. okay yeah, yeah put it on july yeah I mean, he, may, he may say no. I withdraw it. I don't know yeah. what his problem just, is. Just, but. just because of it being a special meeting. Right? Okay. So that takes care. Is there anybody citizen input? Anybody want to address the board? I don't see anybody. There was no sign-up sheet. Do we have minutes from the April twenty-first, twenty twenty-two meeting? We, yeah. You saw them. They passed them around. Does anybody want to make it, make a motion to waive the reading and adopt minutes? Dan Dupier makes the motion to waive the reading and adopt the minutes of the April 21st. We have a second. 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 John Frank, any discussion on the motion? Hearing none. Ricky Sahadi. Yes. Dan Dupier. Yes. Joe Pereira. Yes. John Frank. Yes. Chairman Assad. Yes. Uh, <laughs> motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Who is that? Me. Dan Dupier. Do I have a second? Second. Second. Ricky yes. Sahadi. Any discussion on the motion? Ricky Sahadi. Yes. Dan Dupier. Yes. Joe Pereira. Yes. John Frank, yes. Chairman aside, yes. The Zoning Board of Appeals special meeting of June 9, 2022 is hereby closed. Thank you all. You guys aren't even